Good morning, everybody. Ah. Good morning, Craig. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> ah. <laughs> let me just turn the sign off for a second. What a great day to have some cold 45. Morning. The drink of champions. Uh, really, by all means, Jacobs, you can jump in on it. I don't know if you guys are aware of it or not. I went to bed last night. Yeah. I'm not sure how it ended, but when I went to bed last night, it was Tampa 32 <laughs> and the Eagles. <laughs> Nine. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't. I ain't today. Uh, this tastes delicious. I love uh, it. A little night train, a little Co 45. It is the drink of champions. Some of you people in Philly would know nothing about. Mm. Woo! You know, there are days you come into work and you say to yourself, What's the purpose of life? Right. Why are we all here? Does God actually have a plan for us, right? <laughs> Clearly, he does. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been through some trials and tribulations as a sports fan. God knows I'm a Jet fan, yeah. right? You're a, a new Buffalo Bills fan. I'm a lifelong oh, Buffalo Bills fan. Oh, you're so bad. full of life You're long. a Steeler fan. Yes. Tough day yesterday. Yeah. But last night when I went to bed, uh, the score was 32-9. to 9. Now, I'm going to be honest with the audience. I went to bed. What was the final score? Like, did Philly come back? Did, did Jalen Hurts suddenly remember how to play football? They what scored, happened? They scored yeah. exactly zero points since you fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so 32-9. Yeah. to nine. Yeah. 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 It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Look, we're just getting started here today, but it is your Tuesday morning. Uh, where's Headlines. the defense? But, you know, it's funny. Do Someone tackle him. Yeah. Trip no, no. him. No, no. They, they don't like to tackle in Philadelphia. They play a two-hand touch. They're like the Miami Dolphins. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's and, a state of Pennsylvania. And the Steelers. And the Steelers. The Steelers ain't no different, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I watched you the game last night. There were moments when if you looked down and looked up, you're like, is, it, is this a new uh, type of football where the defense isn't on the field? That's what I felt yesterday, Willie Cologne. It was bad. Like, all the identity issues that the Eagles uh, had during the regular season, it carried right into that game. I mean, when they started off the game running the ball, I said, okay, somebody's listening. First two plays. First two plays. Never saw it for the Eagles. Right. Yeah. By the way, DeAndre Swift, the thing was all said and done at, what, 10 carries, 13 carries, whatever it was, less yeah. than 40 yards on the ground. They didn't run the ball more than 15 times yesterday. So here's the reality. A team that lost five out of six regular season yes, games, that limped into the playoffs, despite all their cockiness and braggadocia and just overall douchiness. <laughs> One sec, I just got to do it. Wasn't even oh, close. Three it was not that even trend. competitive. Bottoms up. 40s in the morning. The 40s in the morning. This yeah. is morning. for all my Giant fans. This is for all you Cowboy ah. fans. All you Jet fans. Ah. And frankly, everybody. Don't steal us in there. Yeah. Steelers yeah. Steelers yeah. Don't steal us in there. Because there's one thing we can agree on, and that is Nick Sirianni has a punchable face. Oh, my God. And uh. watching him on the sideline. Whoa. And by the way, making a couple terrible coaching decisions. Oh, my God. Which we'll get to uh, in the next segment. Uh, just showing you, he had no faith at all in his football team chasing points early. There's a disgusting display of football, and I love right. it. <laughs> It almost made me forget about how bad the Cowboys were on yeah. Sunday. By the way, oh, it, the like, best thing for Cowboy fans, yes. to cover, it's a very good point, was what Philadelphia did last night. That was the best thing for Cowboy Nation yep. as they're still reeling from their loss Sunday was watching Philadelphia you know, take uh, the L the way they did. Look, it's going to be a great show. There was another game earlier. Uh, Willie, what happened in that first was game? It, was it? Um, ah, it was a 4.30 four start, Willie? Really? Steelers lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, man. By the way, I, mean, I give the Josh. Steelers credit because Josh of Mason the Rudolph. Blue. They got within a touchdown, and I know what you were thinking. You were thinking, oh, man. oh yeah. And Here this we go. Is, and this is, by the way, you know, going into halftime, I'm like, I'm done. I'm not going to ruin my Monday. I have kids. I don't want to be the angry dad, but I couldn't turn away from the TV. And they came out at halftime. Jalen Warren, Mason. Start marching. I'm like, here we go. And the whole time I'm saying to myself, when I get to work tomorrow, ooh, <laughs> I'm gonna light this SOB on fire. And then yeah. this happened. Oh yeah. yeah. This happened. I'm sliding. No, I'm not. Uh, yeah. oh, 52 yard run, Someone's Josh Allen, 88 out the gate. 
What the hell happened to the Pittsburgh Steelers defense? Why can't we tackle? Yeah. The tackle was horrible all damn game. Apparently, Pittsburgh went to the same school defense as the Philadelphia Eagles went to, and that's uh, not tackling. But, uh, you know, all day yesterday, and I love 4.30 on a Monday. It was great. Yep. You know, sit on the couch, yeah. have a drink, eat some popcorn, and I just kept saying, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. It was, Anyhow, it was ready. Oh. T- I, today is a celebration. It's a celebration. This. And when we celebrate, we drink on the carton show. Yes. Because yes. the Philadelphia Eagles, your season is over over much like most teams in Philadelphia don't know how to close out and try to win championships so let's just kick back let's enjoy ourselves today on an easy Tuesday six inches of snow in New Jersey but the beer is cold yep. and the reality is this the Eagles are finally out of our lives long Cheers. The Bears. so long Sirianni You know, it's funny. We told you when the Eagles uh, played the Giants in that last game of the season that they had quit. They had quit on the city of Philly and quit on themselves and the coaching staff. And how in the world was that offense all of a sudden going to jumpstart itself in a playoff game? The answer is they weren't going to, and they didn't. More concerning, though, of course, is that defensive performance. Yep. Because this is the same Tampa team that a week ago, when they needed a win to get into the playoffs and win the division, scored nine points against the Carolina Panthers and did not get the ball in the end zone. Here's the part of the game that for guys like me, I don't want to speak for you guys, that hate the Philadelphia Eagles and don't like Nick Sirianni, love. It was the desperation. Yep. So it's 16-3. to three. Yep. Tampa gets out to a quick start. It's in the second quarter. The Eagles get a touchdown. 16-9. to nine. All right, kick the extra point and offsides, holding whatever it was, so they can move the ball closer, get it to the one, or just take the extra point. Now it's a 16-10 to 10 game. And Nick Sirianni decides in that moment, oh, I'm going to go for two. Yeah. yeah. But there's no benefit. If you're 16 to 10, a touchdown and the extra point, you win the game. 16 11 doesn't do you any favors because now you need, if it's field goals, two field goals yep. to win the game. So you're still a touchdown away in reality from winning the game. That's called desperation. That's called a coach who is so concerned with his offense's ability now to score points that he's going to take points off the board. Fast forward later in the game, they're getting blown out. They kick a field goal. They get a defensive uh, penalty. They take the field goal off the table, creating a fourth and five incomplete pass in the end zone, and it's a wrap. You saw a head coach yesterday that was desperate, that was insecure, and didn't believe in his team. Those are the kinds of decisions that get you fired. Yeah, because they struggle against the blitz all day. That's that's the bottom line. And when you go 0 for 11 on third down, I mean, you're dehydrated. You're just thirsting for something to happen. Something, it's some right. type of magical. So that's why you see him pressing that in that regard. And by all accounts, man, we talked about it early when we started the show. There was a great opportunity for the Philadelphia Eagles to say to the world, we hear you. Run the damn Run the ball. ball. Yes. Right. And you didn't, especially the way DeAndre Swift looked like last night. I thought him and Devontae Smith was ready and willing to carry this team and put them on their uh, back, and they pretty much went away. Like, DeAndre Swift had a pretty uh, – uh, Devontae Smith yeah. had, a pre- had a pretty good game. De- uh, Swift did it as great as he could. But overall, man, it was it was coaching. It was just, They got out-coached in the worst way. So, I, I'm sitting here saying, well, if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, man – I don't know how you let Nick, Nick Sirianni back in that building. Yeah, I mean, for they, a lot of reasons. Not team. just because they've now lost six out of their last seven games, but because of the turmoil. Because yeah. it's clear to all of us you know, that the Eagle players started tuning out the coaches, and you had a problem in that locker room. Absolutely. And it, those are two things that both very much evident last night. Just this coaching, being out coached, coaching strategy. Yep. I didn't play in the NFL, Willie, but I'm watching what? the game. I'm like, they're blitzing you on every single but down. What, but that's what Todd Bowles does. Every down. Todd Bowles blitzed damn near 60% of the time. Like, he's, he's going to send pressure. And what's crazy about the situation, too, which what killed me, you have, you have Devontae Smith and you have a big tight end and you have guys who can gas you. Obviously, DeAndre Swift in the screen game is a monster. When the Philadelphia's win Eagle, they, uh, Todd Bowles blitzed them out of the slots. 
Go screen. Throw bubble. Get the, hand, get, the, get the ball out of Jalen Hurts' hands. Anything. And time after time, Todd Bowles was like, all right, you going to sit back there? I'm going to continue to sit the dog. Every and time. Nothing, and they didn't adjust at all. And I'm saying, this got to be the most not mind-numbing football game I've Every ever seen Every Eagles life. fans on the couch saying the same thing. And the announcers are saying it into the t- – they're like, well, they're getting blitzed every single time. They probably shouldn't be are- running these 10-yard dig routes. <laughs> and they get their head turned around five <laughs> seconds after the ball snapped. At one what point, is going on at with Sirianni? At Aikman didn't know what to say. He, he <laughs> wanted to say it plain sight. This is stupid. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's like, like he bro, to say, I give up. But he was, he was, <laughs> yes, exactly. Like he wanted it was to that like, bad. It was bad. You know, it's funny. A lot of times here you watch games and you try to convince yourselves that what you see is going to change when you get to the postseason. But there's an old adage where I come from, which is uh, New Rochelle, New York, which is if it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it ain't a deuce. It's a duck. <laughs> yes. duck. Yeah, right. the, this was the Philadelphia Eagles for the last month and a half. So I think part of it was we all kind of mocked Tampa Bay, right? They kind of backed their way into the playoffs. Baker was hurt with the ribs and the ankle. Yeah. They scored nine points against he great the Carolina that. Panthers. And then last night, you saw Baker Mayfield announce to the world, I'm getting paid. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? right. And by the way, if Tampa wants to bring me back, it's going to cost yeah. them a lot of money. One-year deal, $4 million, plus a lot of incentives. But you saw the comeback player of the year playing like he was playing against children yesterday in Philadelphia. Not even, it wasn't that he just looked great. They looked like a new offense. Like, this is time after time, whether it was Rasheed White, whether it was Trey Parker, whether it was the big tight end for the Bucs. Like, uh, these guys... I mean, even Mike Evans didn't have, like, Chris Gallagher and Mike drops. Evans. They had drops all over yep. the first half. Yep. It was Baker in the pocket dropping dimes. And I'm saying to myself, I know the Eagles are bad, but this is really bad. But like, also, you got Baker Mayfield looking like the next coming. It was a laser night. show. Like, yeah. it was just, just it was awesome. on the line right into people's bread baskets. And, you know, Mike Evans had a huge drop early. Yep. And then Otten had a huge drop early. And Mike Evans had a second drop. And when that happens, we've seen it happen with the Chiefs. They sort of, like, lose faith in each other in the offense. Nope, Baker's still dropping back. Dimes everywhere. But I said it yesterday. There's the will versus want to, right? There's sure. no way you can go That's into tackling. the game and not tackle as better. Like, you got to will yourself. If a def- if an opponent is coming at you and you think you're solely in the NFL going to get there with arm tackles and then he's not going to break that, like, it's just peewee Did football. I, I, Run I, your legs on contact. Two things I thought uh, in this game. Number one, football is a very easy game to play in offense when the defense doesn't want to tackle you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, no joke. Like, yo, we, you're seeing some of the highlights here, and it's just bad tackling. All like, day. Uh, uh, and that's a team that's given up. That's a team that's totally quit. And like you talk about want to, there's no want to in there. And I think they'll be thrilled if Nick Sirianni and Matt Patricia and the rest of that coaching staff is kicked to the curb and a new regime comes in. Well, obviously we'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. Belichick, yeah. Harbaugh, whomever else uh, the case may be. But I, I actually thought on the very first drive of the game, I'm like, I wonder what Todd Bowles is going to do. Right, because Rashad White looked like he was going to have a big game. And I was like, man, they played right into Philly's hands. After the Baker Mayfield scramble for seven yards, it was incomplete pass, incomplete pass. Oh, they settled for a field goal. And I said, damn it, hand the ball off to White. He was off to a very quick start. And they abandoned it. I'm like, Philly's going to come down. I'm going to be all ticked off. And again, I went to bed. It was 32-9. to I don't know how the game ended. But when I went to bed, the Eagles were losing. But early on, I was like, man, I felt like Tampa you know, gave Philly a shot. And then it was very clear, eight minutes into the game, you know, three drives or so into the game, that the Philly we saw against the Giants, against the Cardinals, was the exact same Philly that we were going to get last night. Yeah, and like we said it before. And I love it. After those two, I love it. After those Matter two, of fact, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got to do it. Craig is going to finish by the way, with 40 by the end of the show. You're going to want to stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Philly, this is for you. You're going to want to stay F tuned. That, it's safe for Philly. Who's it for? This is for my New York Giant fan friends, and this is for all you Cowboy fans who are calling out sick today because of your embarrassing oh, performance. Week. I got yep. you. Yeah. There you oh, go. Such, oh, such, such damn a boy, Craig. Bottle up. There you Atta go, boy. Man. Woo! Live it up. Ah, yeah. look at, look is at. there anything better in life, I'm sorry, Jacoby, no, no problem. than when a douchey, arrogant team from Philadelphia embarrasses no. itself in front of 20 million people? I can't think of anything better. They, 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 yeah, they didn't just embarrass themselves. I mean, it, it was, you lost to the Bucks. Like, like, that's, that's bad. Earlier, they scored nine points against the Panthers yeah. seven days ago. Right. 
Eight right. days ago, they scored nine by points the way, against the Panthers. The Eagles were favored in this game by like four yeah. points because of what happened between Tampa and Carolina. Yeah. And a must win. Brady wasn't on the field, Now, man. here's what's going point. on real quick before we take a break. I want you to know this. It's very important. My man right here, Mr. Willie Colon, is saying to himself, man, we just did 19 minutes. We're all on the same page. We're all making fun of Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. We're all saying great things about and it's Tampa. The show's going perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah. What he doesn't know (laughs) is that after this break, we're going to discuss the Bills and Steelers game. Oh. And we're going to toast the Pittsburgh. Here we go. (laughs) Uh, And if we can say it together. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. go. There we went. Uh. Yeah. 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 That's not, that's not it. That's not it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're judging Cardinals. Come on. I thought I had I mean, a we shot. Got the right? like in February, February, we got the day to the five. We got the Coliseum in February. NASCAR yeah. is back. It's in February. It yeah. is on. Fuck. Yeah. I don't listen. Hold on. You're not going to throw rocks at my you. car. Though. I probably in the break. Right? Do you know I, the near thing? I, I, You're like, yeah, I got it. I, I know it now. I, it's not like I wake up and practice my meow, 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 meow. No, <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do. What did you just order? The number 23 special? <laughs> no. Yeah. Meow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not it? That's, That's not, not it. it. Okay. Does it sound no. like it, Willie? No, so you guys are the professional kind of motor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Motor, yeah. motor, yeah. bitches. Okay. <laughs> I got Anyhow, yeah. uh, welcome yeah. back to the Carter yeah. Show. As much as Willie <laughs> would like to. It's clearly uh, cultural. There you go. <laughs> I mean, someone's got to say it. Someone's got to say uh, it. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, now it's been said. We're all white cops from Alabama. Yeah, You're right. yeah, man. Um, yeah. Look, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I got. Bad. You got a test. All right, look. Um, <laughs> as much as Willie would like to avoid conversation on the Bills uh, Pittsburgh game, let me just start you off first with how much I love Bills fans. First off, Highmark Stadium yesterday, no assigned seating because there was three feet of snow yeah. covering most of the seats. So they said basically, wherever you can stand, stand. And that, 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 that fan base came out, Strong Island. And before the game, they were like, look, we're Bills fans. Jacoby knows this. Yep. We jump off snow mounds. We jump onto burning tables. I don't care how much snow's on the ground. On fire. And they oh. did it. Let the table on fire. Bam! Yeah. Me and Barry yeah. and Dave, yeah. we're, yeah. we're all doing it once. One more time from the top. Not just, not just one of us. It's all three oh, of us. That's ago. cool. Look at us. There's snow in Buffalo. Yeah, three guys jumping off a snow yeah, mound into a burning so cool. table. Yeah. While the Pittsburgh Steelers couldn't get out of their own way early, made it interesting late. But, of course, the Bills hang on. So, the Bills now host the Kansas City Chiefs uh, next week in a playoff game. Much more on that coming up. But, Jacoby's here with the first in football first. First in football, we start with the other side of that Bills dominance of the Steelers. There is head coach Mike Tomlin, one of the longest tenured head coaches in the league. He's not going anywhere, right? Well, after the game, he was asked about his contract status. And uh, here's how that back and forth played out. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your time. So, uh, Willie, resident Steeler fan, former Steeler, Here we um, go. what was that? Uh, that's called kiss it, right? Like, <laughs> you're not going to answer dumb questions after a tough loss to the Buffalo Bills at home. Listen, I mean, the, I, at the end of the day, Mike Thomas is only going to address the game itself. Like, all those issues are going to come out down the road. He had just walked off the field. Yeah. Literally, after his team, he thought his team was going to wheel themselves to a victory, and it didn't happen. So, uh, I know the reporter's doing what reporters yeah. do, but Mike yeah. Tomlin is doing what Mike Tomlin does. He- I would say this. Uh, I give the, uh, the, the, the gal, the reporter, that asked the question a lot of credit because yeah. that is a talking point that has to be addressed. You know, in the 20 years that Mike's been the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he's never allowed his contract to get – to a year left. They've always renegotiated with two years yes, left sir. or more. Uh, so this is the first time in 20 years that he has sent you to become a lame duck head coach. It is a major storyline in the city of Pittsburgh because they've only had three coaches but, in the last 50 but quickly, years. quickly, uh, yeah. across the league, right? Yeah. McCarthy was asked. All these coaches are asked that question. None yeah. of them answer that. So what makes it – why would you ask something yeah, that you look, know you're going to you, get the, you, like nothing it's from It's a it. fair point. You, you, you do those press conferences more about – 
walk us through some of the decisions you made in the game. Did you, like, I would have asked, was there ever a point you thought of going to Kenny Pickett when the offense was struggling before you kind of turned Mason Rudolph and that offense a little bit loose, right, in the second half and it obviously paid dividends? There were legitimate game questions to ask, sure. okay? George, you Pickens after the game, saying the refs cost us this game. What's your take on that? Yep. But you can't argue the fact that his future in Pittsburgh, which has been discussed very publicly the last month or so, is not a fair question to ask. It's just interesting that you hear the PR director go, anybody? does anybody have any questions? And they're all kind of scared to ask a question. Good. So this one gal goes, okay, I got a question. Right. You got to Yo, a year left on your deal? What's the deal? Yeah, but I think... I, I appreciate the question. For me, one of the comments after the game came from when they're starting running back Najee Harris, right? And he simply said, hey, man, we have some in-house discipline issues, right? For me... That's Deontay Johnson from right. earlier this it's, year, it's, it's, Pickens, it's, all that it's stuff. It's a plethora right? of people. But my sure. point is, that's a question you ask because that's a headline and that's a narrative yeah. that has been following Mike Tomlin for years. Like, at some point, the in-house discipline, and you, you're supposed to be a guy who's established order, you're supposed to be the head of the house, sure. yada, yada, yada. Why is this coming up again. And is yeah, that the reason why they're stealing? By the way, the fair game? question. Look, Mike Thomas simply could have said, I'm not talking about my contract. I'll talk about the game. Yeah. I'm not talking about myself and gone on. But the guy also just lost a playoff game and he's pissed. And don't forget, Big Ben came out and questioned the whole culture. A couple months Mike ago, Tomlin. yeah. Rightfully so. And, and, rightfully so. And, well, you say rightfully so. so. So this question is fair. Why doesn't he stand there and say, I'm not going to discuss that right now. We'll talk about the offseason. Well, because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with the game itself. His future with the Pittsburgh Steelers had nothing to do with what happened on that. So here's field. the question: You know uh, no. Pittsburgh better than we do. Does he what? does he dictate his future in Pittsburgh, or do the Rooney still dictate it? I think it's fifty fifty. You do. I think it's kind of like what we talked about with Belichick. You don't fire Mike. Tomlin. Right. I agree. You have with a discussion you. with Mike Tomlin on how you want to proceed, and if they, if you do feel like you got to make a, a exit, so to speak, what's the best way? Well, of I'll tell you what. Considering you know the blood in the water in Philadelphia with Sirianni, the blood in the water in Dallas, obviously with Mike McCarthy, the seven other. Other job openings, which are currently open. Uh, we know Harbaugh interviewed in uh, L.A. with the Chargers uh, yesterday. Uh, it's interesting. If Mike Tomlin yeah. were suddenly on the market, Oof. now you have a three-headed monster. You got Tomlin. You got Belichick. You got Harbaugh. And Rabel. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you, Mike Rabel. I'm going to be honest. All of a sudden, I might start thinking about firing my head coach. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't see him ever coaching for another outfit like uh, outside of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I could see him maybe stepping in maybe into a front office role or doing something maybe with, on Park Avenue with NFL okay. headquarters. Um, I think he's just solely cemented for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Interesting. We'll keep an eye on that yeah. story. Now we'll move on to teams that are still in the playoffs. That what? is the 49ers, and they'll be hosting the Green Bay Packers and seventh seed head coach Matt LaFleur had this to say about their upcoming opponents. Certainly, we know we're going against one of the elite teams in the National Football League, certainly the, the class of the NFC. Um, they've got a lot of the same players that they've had for a few years now, and they've added some other freak shows over there. So freak shows. we know it's a great challenge, but it's a great opportunity as well. And that's exactly how we'll approach it. Craig, I know you've been in San Francisco. Those are not the freak shows that he's talking about. No, no. Okay, no, but I do no, want to say this. Right now and there's, there's a lot of history between these a, two there's teams. A, there's a dwarf by the wharf. It's another story for <laughs> yep. another day. I, I think yeah. I've seen her. Yeah. Um, but there, these two teams have some history in the playoffs. And the red hot Jordan Wait. Love is coming into town. He, what needs to he, happen? He transitioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What, yeah. Yeah. what needs to happen for the Packers to pull off this upset? <laughs> they can't pull off this upset. You said, oh, oh okay. Oh, what are you going to believe, Craig? Craig! Craig. Well, what, the what, youngest what you gonna team the in the league against the best team in the They conference? just put a whooping on your Cowboys, right? And now you don't want to believe they can possibly no, rough up the Niners? No, they can't. They're, 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 they're out of their class in this one. There's a reason they're a 10 point underdog. They're they're going to get blown out by the best team, uh, arguably, in the entire NFL, certainly in the NFC. I don't want to argue the Ravens with you right now. We'll wait till February to do that Bills. when they play each other. But, you know, Bills. look, th th there's a reason that 30 years into a career I'm beloved by <laughs> every fan base of every city I've ever worked in because the reality is this. Uh, I call it the way it is. Green Bay 
Congratulations. You won a playoff game. You should be very proud of yourselves. Good job, Green Bay. Matter of fact. I mean, matter of fact. Celebrate. Let's get both. Let's get it. I'm going to go before they get the ball. There you go. Swigs on everybody. Congratulations, Green Bay. You got your one playoff game. You can't make that face after you. Chuck Tassel. Yeah, that's a big, yeah. that's, that's a big thick head on that yeah. one. Just the way I like it. Um, that being said, uh, the, the, I mean, it's over. Come on. <laughs> like, what are we doing? You know, the Green Bay Packers are 10-point underdogs, rightfully so, to the class of the NFC, well-rested San Francisco 49ers. I give Green Bay a lot of credit. You know, winning a playoff game in Dallas where they hadn't lost the game in two years is awesome, and they deserve all the flowers that comes with that. The coming out party of Jordan Love, the great coaching by Matt LaFleur, Matt, all, uh, all the accolades. Yeah. You know, even the front office, Murphy and Gutenschwinkter, you know, celebrating a playoff win. Great. But at some point, you know, we got to keep it real on this show. I think it's why the show works and resonates with America. The Green Bay Packers are not going into San Francisco and beating the San Francisco 49ers. What, what would make you believe in a Green Bay Packers? Is it not Jordan Love it's and not his a, let me, it's Is it not question. the defense who's playing no, 10 times it's not, better? But let me be clear. It's got nothing to do with Green Bay. Then who? They're running into a juggernaut. They're running into the machine and Brock Purdy. Debo, Ayuk, McCaffrey, the defense. They're running into the most talented team in the NFL on both sides of the football. And it's just going to be too much for them. You can lock that down. Green Bay cannot and will not just, beat San Francisco. You, you sit here and drag the Cowboys for not being for, for being choke artists in the playoffs. Yeah. Are the Niners not the same? No, uh, they're not. Because if who if, was in the Super Bowl last year? Oh, Chris? stop! If the guy didn't have an arm, right? Oh. It's like asking Richard Kimball's killer to suddenly be a quarterback <laughs> in the NFL. Like, what are we doing? Okay. Like, you can't knock San Francisco for not getting to the Super Bowl Why last not? year. Why not? You be- knocked the Cowboys time after time. Because Christian McCaffrey played quarterback for them in that playoff game. It doesn't game. matter. We judge on your drink. Never. So. You judge. <laughs> well, not today. Uh, my point is you judge teams on how far they go. We talked about time after time what the Niners have done time after time, year after year. They get far deep runs into the playoffs, yes. and they're no shows. So why can't we hold them to the same accord we hold the Dallas Because Dallas. last year you can't criticize the Niners for not getting to the Super Bowl when they didn't have a quarterback in the championship game. Craig is right about this one. They literally did not have a quarterback in a playoff game and they yeah. lost the game. That's fine. But here's when you can't criticize the 49ers. No. Three game losing streak this year. Yes. Their starters haven't played since like before Christmas. Like they're, they're going to be rusty and all it's going to take is this red hot team to come in. First possession. You know what? We'll take the ball just like they did against the Cowboys. Yeah, that's a mistake. Go down the field, <laughs> score seven points, put some pressure on Purdy. Next thing you know, three and out. Things can happen. Kobe, there is a roadmap in which the Packers start hot and win this game. You can't say they didn't have a quarterback when Brock Purdy got knocked out of the game in the NFC Championship. It wasn't like he wasn't ready and dressed for the game. It was the first drive of the game. And that son Reddick knocked him out and broke his so elbow. So whose fault is that? That's called football. But the point is, it's not like San Francisco played the Eagles last year in the championship game at 100%. Didn't have a quarterback. So I'm not going to Stop saying they didn't have a quarterback. He was drafted in the game. He just got knocked out of the game. That's called football. It wasn't like he was left on the bus. Thus, they what didn't are you talking have a, about? They didn't have a quarterback. That's nonsense. Huh? Well, while you're at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh Jim Harbaugh has officially had an interview with an uh, NFL team. This time it is the L.A. Chargers. He's not going in. They've got Justin Herbert. Now they potentially could add Jim yeah. Harbaugh, quarterback guru, great quarterback. Do you think this is a good fit for Harbaugh? Yeah, I do, actually, because they've got a quarterback, and despite the fact that they've underachieved, uh, as Willie can tell you more than I can, there is talent on that roster on both sides of the yeah. ball. They've just never I realized think they're some sort of expert in underachieving. I was like, whoa, uh, whoa. Well, I mean, <laughs> you play for the Jets, right? Yeah. Um, that, that being the case, I don't think Harbaugh goes there. I think they're a star. I don't know if you're in business, there's this term stalking horse. You're probably familiar with it. You went to NYU, right? Yep. yep uh, cool. I think they're using the Chargers. He's using the Chargers Elaborate. as what people refer to as a stalking horse in business. And that is, you know, well, it's a good fit. I could see him out there. You know, other teams may panic. Well, we better get Harbaugh in here before he signs a deal with the Chargers. And to me, I- I'm a firm believer that if you're a franchise that can uh, clearly upgrade your coaching position, obviously they have an interim coach right now. It's not going to last there after firing Staley uh, you know, this, during the season. To me, 
it's incumbent upon you as ownership to not let him leave. As soon as uh, Jim Harbaugh walks out of that hotel or that bar, wherever they are, and gets on a plane and leaves Los Angeles, you've lost him. And to me, there's no one else better for that job than Jim Harbaugh because he's one of the great offensive minds and quarterback kind of whispers in all football at any level, right? So if I'm the Chargers, and I obviously covet him, and it makes a lot of sense, he fits our current roster in a real good way, I can't let him leave. And to me, the reason Jim Harbaugh left is that he's using L.A. to get a different job whether that's the Cowboy job if it opens, whether that's the Eagle job if it opens, or one of the other seven jobs that we know is open. And, and I think the L.A. Chargers did themselves a real disservice by not closing that out and making him an offer, Godfather style, that he couldn't refuse. You know, there's a thing in business called the hotel offer, and that's when you're trying to sign somebody and you're in a hotel room with them negotiating. And it goes like this. If you leave the hotel room and your signature's not on that contract, we're not going to hire you, but you make it so he's got to sign it. Meaning five years, $12 million a year, uh, sorry, $20 million a year, right. $100 million. You're the new head coach of the Chargers, and you make it so he has to sign it. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he doesn't, he doesn't cure their woes, right? Like you're talking about a Chargers team that simply can't defend. So if you're going to bring somebody in here, and I understand you had Brandon Stanley in, and he was supposed to be that guy, but he was got off. You don't have a quarterback problem. You don't even have an offensive nope. problem. You solely have a defensive problem. So, Valley, so you think Belichick's a better answer for, for LA me, than that is okay. Belichick. By the way, I yes. wouldn't argue that. Yeah. Real quick. Quick, before we take a break, there is some breaking news off of the Eagle Buck game last night, and that is, you know, we've always talked the last three years that the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line is the best offensive line of football. You can argue it, but that's been the kind of narrative in Philadelphia, why they've had so much success, including the tushy-pushy, which didn't work last night. Yes. But that being the case, uh, it's being reported that Jason Kelsey is retiring. Wow. And his career, which will probably wind up in the Hall of Fame, but his uh, legendary Pro Bowl career as center of the Philadelphia Eagles has now come to an end. Yeah, he's a, he was a hell of a ball player, man. I loved everything about his game. Uh, some consider an undersized center, a center, but talking about a leader in the locker room, a leader amongst men, well-respected, decorated at the position, uh, 13 years in the league, Pro Bowls. He's done everything. And, and, and listen, the narrative of how much he saved his brother's career um, and really stepped on, the, you know, stepped on the desk and really got Travis Kelsey into the league. Now they're both going into the Hall of Fame together. All right, listen, uh, and the word is that he told teammates in the locker room after the game that that was his final game as an NFL player. So a uh, great career and uh, did not win the Super Bowl this year. Yes. All right. <laughs> Much more coming up on the show. Uh, John Harbaugh, that's Jim's brother, yes, in case sir. you know that. He's the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens. We got the Ravens now sitting at home waiting to slurp up some of that playoff blood. We'll tell you what's cooking in Baltimore right after this on FS1. All right, so it seems like we have forgotten about the Baltimore Ravens since they haven't uh, played anybody in three weeks uh, by the time they play the Houston Texans this weekend. Head coach John Harbaugh was asked about how important this extra bit of rest was for his team physically and maybe even emotionally. Here's John Harbaugh. Go ahead. I think the mental rest was valuable. You know, you work hard to get that bye. I don't think anybody's ever requested not to have the bye when they earned it, have they? So it's definitely a positive, you know, and I think our guy, I know our guys looked at it that way, and we had a really good week of practice, so uh, we did what we needed to do. All right, look, that's a, a veteran head coach who's been through it. He's won a Super Bowl, so he knows exactly what it takes to make the playoff run. But, you know, there is uh, uh, validity to the question of how many weeks without playing a real game or being tackled or tackling and the pressure of 80,000 people and a third and long kind of, you know, all the real stuff that happens in an NFL game. How many weeks can you not have that? And then just expect to show up, albeit at home, albeit against a team that you're better than, and just, you know, bang, take, uh, you know, start playing the way you left off. Yeah, the bottom line is, I mean, uh, like, listen, you, you have the mental rest, the emotional rest, but it's really what you're worried about is the, losing the physical edge, right? Because even while you're trying to, get, trying to get guys healthy and ready for the game, you don't want to lose that physicality in which we, I've been talking about in which the Baltimore Ravens are playing. Because if you're going against the Texans, the Texans played the Browns and handled the Browns, right, on both sides of the football. Mm -hmm. So the hard part for the coaches, all right, when do I put the pass back on the boys, right? Sure. How do I get the guys to come out this game 
really ready for the fight because if you start off slow with C.J. Stroud and the way he's throwing the football with this offense, it can get ugly for you fast. Well, I, here's how I view it. It's kind of a simplistic form. And I do that. I want to dumb it down so that most of middle, the, the Midwest can understand what I'm saying. And, and that's oh. it, it, no disrespect, but I, I'm just saying it's, it's what it, it is what yeah. it is. I see the educational numbers. It ain't pretty right now. <laughs> All right, here's the deal, though. Uh, you know, it's one thing if the Houston Texans are able to beat in their own building a 38-year-old Joe Flacco. I know that was tough. I know Joe Flacco had a resurgence <laughs> like he was Dan Marino. He threw I back get to it. back pick sixes. My man, pots and pans, <laughs> right? Okay. okay. Back to back. But the Houston Texans don't have the luxury this week of playing against a 38 year old Joe Flacco. 100%. They're playing against the MVP in the league. But this isn't about the so, Texans, right? This is about know, ba- I'm simply talking about Baltimore. I Listen, when the year I won a Super Bowl and we had a first round bye and we had to come, we had to play the San Diego Chargers at home. I remember Mike Tomlin telling us, and he allowed us to go away on vacation, get with our loved really? ones, heal up and all that stuff, and we all came back in the building. The first thing we did when we got back in the building, full padded yeah. practice. Because he understood, football this time of year is about physicality. Well, he's also not stupid. He wants to knock the Bahamas out of all of you. Yeah. Well, that was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he knocked yeah. Mexico right out of me. Exactly right. Yeah. Hey, stop talking Spanish. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Somebody. Uh, look, you know, it's funny because you've got San Francisco on one side. you got Baltimore on the other side. Haven't played essentially in three weeks. And the expectation is, since you're both, you know, ten-point favorites, you know, Baltimore against the Texans, San Fran against Green Bay, there's an expectation that they run those teams out of the building. I don't think so. I, I think, I think, listen, I love Baltimore and I love what they've been able to do this year. But watching the Texans, you know, through the last couple of weeks, they're a different outfit, man. We'll see what happens. Stop. Relax. You Stop. refuse Stop. to believe anything. <laughs> any, any, any underdog. Anytime. Any underdog. You're just absolutely impossible. You get mad at – first of all, you get do, mad at – Do you remember before the Cowboys-Packers game how he was talking about that game happening? On top of that, but this is my thing. When Greg Jennings comes up and he goes, put yeah. the team on his back, right? Yeah. And Greg gives you the old faithful, like, bet the quarterback, bet this. You're like, oh, Greg, how can you do? That's but right. You're doing the same thing. You're know. picking the Niners and the Ravens and all the juggernauts of the team. Of course, and they're the Cowboys expected to over win. the Packers. Right. You're like, there's no chance the and Packers, what did the beat Packers the Cowboys. Do? Bye bye, so Jerry. Weird because I don't remember making that pick. But if you say I did, <laughs> then I'll go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, time now for our favorite Tuesday morning segment. Although something we like to call, yeah. yeah. But here we go. Yeah. Yes. The Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Went to Dallas and they beat the Cowboys. Beat them up, Greg. And, and yeah. yeah, Jordan Love played great in that game. But what? Now they're playing the San Francisco 49ers. There's nothing. The best team on both sides of the ball, and they're going to get waxed in San Francisco. Yeah, I think when you talk about Lafleur and what he said after the game, how the team has new energy, the run game, this defense who's played lights out the last couple of weeks, they're going to be ready for the fight. It's going to be a closer game than you think. And Jordan Love, by all accounts, Stop. has a rock. Uh, number two. Yeah! yeah! The Dallas Cowboys have 36 regular season wins in the last three years. And yeah! yeah! Dak Prescott actually had a great regular season. But you cannot trust Mike no. McCarthy or Dak Prescott or that star in January or the postseason. Damn all that. You can't trust that defense. What the hell were they thinking going into Jerry's world looking like that on a, in a playoff game at home? So, yeah, you can get mad at Dak all you want. That defense was atrocious. It was bad. Number three. Yeah! yeah. The Buffalo Bills fired their offensive coordinator in midseason. Yeah! Yeah. The head coach invoked 9 11 terrorists to try to motivate (laughs) the Buffalo Bills. That's a long time ago. (laughs) But But. they're 60 minutes away from the AFC Championship game. Yes! 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 They're, listen, I'm not going to celebrate being the Steelers. You're supposed to be the Steelers no, you're at home. Not. You are supposed to. That was light work. That was a little amusement sure yes. for the real meal that is the Kansas City Chiefs. Don't let this team beat the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is the last time he won a road playoff game. He never has. Zero. He's got a big goose egg yeah. in that regard. That's yeah, right. but I, like I was telling Jacoby earlier, I think it was going to hurt the Buffalo Bills that they did play on Monday and that the Chiefs actually have an extra day of rest. So they are a day behind, and I think it's going to hurt the uh, Bills. I think the Bills are going to get mopped up. Oh, stop it. Oh, they're not going to get mopped up. Kansas City doesn't mop anybody up. Yeah. <laughs> They'll get mopped up. <laughs> By the way, they're playing, they're playing Mason Rudolph. They have to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got two more for you real quick. Okay yeah! The Eagles were 10-1 and one at one point during this season. And yeah! yeah! 
They went to the Super Bowl they did. last That's year. Good. But everybody hates Nick Sirianni. Yeah. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is overrated. That defense sucks, and they're afraid to tackle. Yeah, uh, don't forget was retiring. Who? Oh, and Jason Jason Kelsey Kelsey is retiring. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how this turns around, man, but there's going to be some major overhaul from top to bottom. I pray for Eagles fans because it doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. Final one for you. Yeah. yeah. We're a tight knit family. Yeah. yeah. We all like each other. But what? our producer Scott made soup yes. and did not share it I got with the soup. entire it was crew. Fantastic. I never soup. had the soup. I requested the soup. I, I got the soup. The soup. Yeah. You did not request the soup. Yeah. You didn't get the soup. Uh, Jacoby got the soup. Right. Willie didn't Jacoby get the soup. soup. Did you get the soup? Craig didn't get the soup. And Ethan didn't get the soup. Oh. So Ethan got the meatballs that Craig made. Jacoby didn't get any meatballs. Willie, did you get any meatballs? I didn't get anything. So that's the real problem. The meat. The meatballs are in the oven right now. It's a post-show gift to everybody. Oh, yeah, nice. right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. That's a lot. Forty right. meatballs. Anyhow, coming up. Forty and meatballs. Back to your headlines. Yeah, and name for the show. Back to how we started the show. Forty and meatballs. Forty and meatballs. That's enjoying ourselves oh, on the day the after <laughs> the day after the Philadelphia Eagles get eliminated from the playoffs by a guy named Baker Mayfield, yes, who yep. threw for 390,000 yards last night. <laughs> Let's all celebrate and enjoy a drink. Salute, everybody. Bye-bye, Philly. Good morning. Welcome back to the Carton Yee! Show. It is a celebration this morning. Woo-hoo! Why? Because <laughs> not only did the Cowboys lose. Oh, yeah. The Philadelphia Eagles lost last night. They were favored on the road against the Bucks. And look at Craig Carton enjoy his 40 in the morning. Oh, yeah. The Eagles hat. My question for you is this. What? With Sirianni rumored to have lost the locker room. Yes. Them to have lost this game. Travis yes. Kelsey now reportedly retired. <laughs> Fletcher Cox might not come back. Brandon oh, Graham oh. might not come back. Oh, no. Is this going to lead to a complete overhaul? Of the Eagles. And I well, I think what it's going to do is uh, there is going to be a complete overhaul. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe you're not worth $200 million. I don't know. You look like crap last night, but to all my dead homies, you know how that goes. Oh, pull uh, it on them. Can't do it in here. There's rules against it. That's true. That, 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 that be, right. But, you know, here's what's interesting about what's going on with the Eagles. Uh, I think Sirianni is gone. I think uh, having lived in Philadelphia and done sports talk radio in Philly, uh, the mob is pissed. Uh, and I don't mean the Italian mob. I mean the mob of Eagle fans that live, breathe, and die with the uh, exploits of this team. Will they consider making Big Dom the head coach if Sirianni is out? Big yeah. Dom was on the sideline he yesterday, the sideline. and they lost, by the way. Look, here's the deal. Sirianni has to go. And you can make an argument that that's unfair because, look, he's been in the playoffs. He's gone to a Super Bowl. But the way this thing unfolded this yep. year, it's one thing if you're going to lose games and kind of you lose your identity and not make it back to your know, Super Bowl yep. or advance in the playoffs because of injury. Or you know, your quarterback had a you know, brain fart and threw five interceptions in a game and you have to suck it up. But this has been a slow burn. And we have seen so many uh, kind of chinks in the eagle armor now over the last month and a half that you can't ignore it. You know, it's one thing to lose. Every team and every coach, every player, at some point in their career is going to experience tough losses and a bad season. That's not the problem. The problem is how do you react to it? Yeah. And I don't need to, you know, to cover the Eagles or be in that locker room to know where there's smoke, there's fire. And it can't be every single week, sideline problems, rumors from the locker room. The coaching staff has lost the locker room, A. B, there's now infighting amongst the players, and you saw that last night. I know a video of it, of Dallas Goddard, who's not that guy. You know, getting into it with Jalen Hurts, and Jalen, the way he always does, sitting there stoically saying nothing. Uh, It's a problem. Now, you've got a lot of talent in that locker room still. This is not a, we need to rebuild from zero and try to get back to where we are. But I'll tell you what, you know, the Eagles and their problems are now emblematic of the whole damn division. Commodores suck. Cowboys are probably going to look for a new head coach. Eagles are going to look for a new head coach. And the only guy that's safe right now is a guy that barely won six games last year in Brian Dable. And if you're following the Giants situation, there's crazy stories coming out of that locker room yeah. where everybody hates Brian Dable. So the NFC East is absolutely in flux. 
and I'm loving it. Yeah, but you know. The- I love it, Willie. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. Like you've always said as a Steeler player, you hate the Ravens, yes. you hate the Browns, oh. and you hate the Bengals. Well, as a New Yorker, I hate Philadelphia. <laughs> and I went to bed last night. Maybe you guys can help me text me or you tweet me or whatever it is. When I went to bed, the Eagles were losing 32-9. to 9. Yep. But I didn't check. Like, did they lose? No, they lost. 32 to 9. They got smashed in half. 32 to 9. Didn't miss a damn thing, then. <laughs> Not at all. But I, but I got to say this, man. This reminds me awfully. Listen, when, I, when Chip Kelly, remember when Chip yes. Kelly was at one time? Before he went to UCLA. Right. He he broke up the band between it was Michael Vick, the show, you know, D-Jack, and uh, yes. Alex Shady. And I remember, because I knew some of those guys in our locker room, man, they talked about how much, how toxic it was, right? Because it wasn't just the players fighting with each other. They didn't trust the front office, right? They sure. didn't trust the building. And from a player standpoint, when you don't trust the, the higher ups and the people to make the right decisions, that's when guys go rogue. And that's when guys start looking for a way out. And now that you have this with Sirianni, I understand there may be cause for concern. You may want to get him out the door. But the next guy in has to be able to establish order because this team quit, man. This yeah, quick. You, you need the quote unquote. You know, you always go from players coach to disciplinarian, disciplinarian to players coach. You want to change the whole feel yeah. of an organization. I just don't know how Sirianni survives it because he he not only lost the locker room, they quit on him on the field. And I go back to the last game of the year where the Eagles, uh, you know, the Cowboys are playing Washington, yep. Eagles are playing the Giants, and there's a chance if the Dallas Cowboys you know, don't show up and Washington beats them, the Eagles win the division. And they get a home playoff game to the two seed, the way the Dallas Cowboys were, and they would have had Green Bay at home, right? And I'm watching that game against the Giants, and I said it on the show, they quit. They quit. didn't have any interest in tackling, and they embarrassed themselves, right? Hey. I saw that exact same performance last night against Tampa. This- they didn't want to tackle. And it started early. We got a clip right here. Play the this, clip. This, this blows my mind. This is only, a, I think, the first drive of the game, man. And we're talking about the Eagles versus, uh, obviously, Eagles versus Bucks. This is a first. <coughs> what? Make a tackle. That's Two. on third down. Make a tackle. Three. Make a tackle. Four. Yeah. Like, first, this is the first drive of the game. Yeah. And this is how you come out? Like yeah. One, look at that. Two, three, right? Like the, the slide yeah. I told you. But my point is like. To be fair, though, that was James Bradbury. I mean, that's what he does. He, yeah, he ended up benched in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah so nice. to be fair to the audience, if you watch the show on a regular basis, I know you do. Yesterday, we kind of purged ourselves of quarterbacks <laughs> who are no longer playing in the postseason. Well, it's time. Oh, it's time. Oh, oh, really? Jesse Jeff? It's time to oh, take Jesse. flight, young man. Jesse, go, Jesse, fly, Jesse, fly, Eagles, fly. Three, a two, two a one. Fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, that wasn't man. good. That it's wasn't the beer. good. It's that the, wasn't yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, too drunk. Here we go. The one beer. more time. Yeah. Get him out of here, Craig. Take hey. Hey. Okay. Let's take that away. Coming out your check. That, by the way, take that. Yeah. We lost and, Scott. And we'll ride at Dallas Cowboys. Bye-bye, Woo-hoo! Jerry. Nice. We got a lot of hats. I got to tell you, then it's so great to be a fan of schadenfreudism when I get great satisfaction over other teams' failures and losses. And I'm watching that game last night again. I went to bed early. It was 32-9 to 9 when I went to bed. But you guys were telling me that the Eagles did make a comeback and they lost the game 32-9. to 9. And I woke up with such a big smile <laughs> on my face. That's why I'm drinking a 40, enjoying the Eagles' demise. 40s and meatballs on a Tuesday. That's Craig. it. Now back to Jacoby. Um, oh, what's th- this? That? That, uh, that wasn't the only game last night there, Craig. There was another game? There was another game. The Buffalo Bills also played a football contest last night in Buffalo against uh, Willie Steelers. And uh, Josh Allen just kept throwing touchdowns. Mason yeah. Rudolph kept throwing the ball to the, to the Bills. George Pickens kept fumbling the ball, complaining about the refs. And while they did get to within one score at the end of the game, the Bills were never really, really tested in this one. Craig, the yeah. Bills are going to run this all the way to the Super Bowl. It's a done deal at this point. Well, I think Holy they're going to get to the AFC Championship game. I they're said it a month Bowl. and a half ago that they were back, that they'd win the division and beat Kansas City to have a matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. So that game to uh, far ahead of ourselves. Here's the beauty of what the Bills did yesterday. It's two things. Uh, three things, actually. Number one, oh, yeah, good. no turnovers from Josh Allen. Number All right, one. that's key. It's good. Number two, this is a team when they needed to get first downs, relied on the running game and Cook. 
Yeah. Uh, they weren't forcing everything to Allen to have to make a play. And number three, they devised the new way to use Stephon Diggs, and it's not the long game. Short it's game. the quick little passes. Get the ball. Your line of scrimmage, two, three yards, dig routes, and he had, what, seven catches yesterday. Yep. That was a big part of that game. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Will, 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 stop. You're scaring me, um, Willie. Willie. Violence is never the answer. <laughs> violence is always the answer. Never really the alone. answer. Violence is never the answer. Well, but in this case, I appreciate what you just well, said. My Look, give the Steelers credit, man. You had Mason Rudolph as your quarterback. They fought back in the second half. They made it a one-score game, yeah. and then it was a wrap. They had no chance of winning that game. You know it. You can't start a playoff game like that. You talk no. about the two turnovers. It was absolutely atrocious. By the way, if you're a football player, what's wrong with just falling to the ground with the ball in your hand? Is it in... Uh, you know, you're talking about snow and wet conditions. The most important thing in the game is holding on to the football. Correct. I mean, even the, uh, the fair move fumble, which well, I thought it was fumble. I thought it was a fumble, too. They got his head is big enough where it touched the ball. And, and I'll tell you, the play of the game for me, I know a lot of people are going to say that it's the 52-yard touchdown run by Josh nope. Allen, which was great. The play of the game to me is from uh, an unknown wide receiver Shakur. named Sri Lanka. <laughs> on, uh, on the Buffalo Bills. Secure. He's like four foot six inches tall, and he runs like a 4 Look at this 340. Look at this tackle. I want you to watch it. And that's Mika Fitzpatrick, yeah. star safety, all pro. But, you know, you, there's, there are some guys who can juke you out of a phone booth. Watch well, this move on. right watch here. This this is, right here. Watch this, this right move here. right here. Watch this. Right. Oh. Yep. But, but, this is oh not even, the, but this is not even the worst part of that play. Look at go to the go all the way to the end. I hope okay. you can freeze it. Look at our uh, linebacker Miles uh, Jack at 16. Yeah. Jump on the wrong person's back. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Step on things even have the ball. <laughs> and you jumped on the wrong. Look at this. She quit. He tacked right. <laughs> he mugs the wrong time. <laughs> I mean, I can't even process that. What are you looking at, Miles Tech? Tech, 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 tech look at you here. clearly looking at number 10, oh. and you attack 14. <laughs> what the hell is going on? You're talking about a low point in the game. I said, dude, tap the guy with the ball. Hey, hey at least he wants to tackle oh. somebody. Yeah. Right? I, but, yeah. Like, a lot of guys are playing two-hand touch. He at least tried to tackle somebody. But Stephon Diggs wasn't even making a move. He was <laughs> simply just about to there's, celebrate. There's the George There's the, the, yeah. the George Pickett's fumble, and then immediately the next play after that was Kincaid over the middle, about 25 yards. Yeah. Every pass by, by Josh Allen. There's the Josh Allen 52-yard run. Let's just take a look at the 52-yard run. Because Josh Allen, he's, it, it, whether, whether they get down to the Chiefs, I'm never really concerned because he can always just make a play. Yeah. Whether it's a deep ball or whether it's a long run. It was the third run, and nine that killed him. Whether it's like, third, like third down, he can always this make right a play. This right here And this is, again, it's Steeler tackling. Are, what, are tackle! We, are we going to tackle him? Yeah. But, this, but nope. this has been a problem throughout the playoffs. I watched Patrick Mahomes do it against the Dolphins. Sure. There was a time when he was running up the sideline. The defender stayed in front of him just hoping he gets out of bounds. Mahomes picks up another 10 yards. Yep. The, the person that did it the best during this week's playoffs was Joe Flacco scrambling. I think it was the defensive back for the taxes. Uh, Texas did a booty break dance on Flacco's head. Yeah. Like, hit the quarterback. Like, yeah. I, I, I'd to rather be, say, well, to, to be fair, it. Joe Flacco scrambling <laughs> doesn't yeah. quite yeah. look like but my Josh point Allen is, scrambling. Shoot your gun, man. Yeah, Stop letting fair. these quarterbacks run <laughs> wild. Fair. Anyhow, yeah. so the Bills get the win. Yes! The Bills, there you go. The Bills are now home yes! against the Kansas City Chiefs next weekend. Uh, and that's the matchup everybody wanted because they're two of the best Stop teams, of balloons. course, in the AFC. Your balloons have been deflated, but you still got your Bills swagger. And you're going to have to come up. <laughs> you're going to have to come up with something on Friday to support your Bills going into that game you against Kansas ideas. City. And I'll tell you what. Well, a couple side notes. Give the people of Buffalo a lot of credit. Yeah. Three feet of snow come down. They damn near sold the they building. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. They were throwing like, snowballs. So many of bat blues went into that crowd. Like, how awesome is that? And to me, for everybody that was yelling and screaming about, hey, would they build the new stadium in Orchard Park? You know, that's why you got to put a retractable roof on it. No, you don't. This is why exactly. you don't. Exactly. You know, there's so this charm yep. in playing these cold weather cities, and that's the advantage to that. Well, now you know, as soon as you put a roof uh-huh. on a building, you're not in Buffalo anymore. So I love the fact that it's going to be an open air city. The Eagles have no excuse, right? But both the Steelers and the Dolphins were on the road in very cold conditions. They did not look like they wanted to tackle. Yeah, yeah I, I don't give Pittsburgh the same excuse I'll, I'll, I'll give Miami. I agree. Because Pittsburgh lives in it also. Pittsburgh is just tackle. as cold as, as Buffalo is, as Cleveland is. Miami's a different ballgame. 
game. Yeah, when you're walking around in shorts and slides <laughs> in the middle of December, summer yeah. and Christmas, and it's 75 degrees, going to Buffalo, going to Kansas City, you know, going to those cities is different. Pittsburgh can't make the same claim. When they woke up in Pittsburgh on Saturday, it was cold. Yeah, especially with Still a Nation. We, if you follow Twitter and me and Alex Buford, our producer who does a great job here, we were laughing back and forth because Steelers fans on Saturday and Sunday, it was like, what is this? This right. is why you stopped the game? This is a spring day in Pittsburgh. And you play like that? Like, it's, it's, it's But still, I know you're down on the Steelers. I, I give the Steelers a lot of credit. They made it a game in the fourth quarter. They came out fighting the They half. made it a game. Yeah. They, you know, you've seen teams like the Dolphins just roll over and die and give up. I know they lost. I know it's disappointing. But you damn near came back and tied that game Correct. with Mason Rudolph as your quarterback. And that's not going to make you feel any better. But you at least have the pride that my team showed up. My team fought back. My team didn't say at halftime, we don't want to come out of the locker room. They came out and they fought. And let's be honest about it. We're all thinking the same thing. When they got within the score, we're all saying the same thing. Great. This is where Josh Allen throws a pick and the Steelers have a chance to tie the game. We all thought it. Craig, if we would have won that game, I was I was planning on showing up shirtless with just my Super Bowl ring. Yeah. And I was going to stand on his desk, and I was going to piss all over Jacoby's seat. I was just going to, it's going to be animalistic in here. Just how barbaric the thoughts to do I that? had. I'm not sure if we're allowed to yeah. do that, but like the Bills, like like I the Bills can drink won. a 40 Oh, we can drink, but we can't pee everywhere? I'm glad Josh Allen didn't have any turnovers. Because this is America. <laughs> yeah. What else we got you, Kobe? <laughs> Moving on to our final headline, and it involves, don't forget, the Dallas Cowboys fell apart this weekend, too. Yes. And there's going to be some fallout. So my question is this for you, Mr. Carton. Yeah. Now that Jerry Jones has had 24 hours to kind of think about this, who do you expect to leave the Cowboys that was on the Cowboys this season? Uh, uh, well, Mike McCarthy, if you're talking player-wise. Players and coaches. Yeah, I think all the players are coming back. Uh, obviously, you got some contracts you have to now yeah. think about, whether it's Michael Parsons or, you Tyrus know, CeeDee Lamb or, yeah, there's guys. But, you know, I also want to say this. There's going to be a lot of talk right now about what you do with uh, Dak Prescott. And my answer to that is absolutely nothing. Because he, he's under contract for another year. He's got a no-trade clause, so he's protected from you moving him. But he's got $60 million bucks coming his way as far as the cap hit goes, right? So I, I always try to figure out, what's the rush? Like, you're the Dallas Cowboys. You control the future of Dak Prescott, not Dak Prescott, right? And Dak Prescott, off of another poor playoff showing, is not going to have 20 teams lined up outside his door willing to give him a quarter of a billion dollars. So if I'm Dallas, I got to get CeeDee Lamb signed up. He's too important to my team. Obviously, I got to consider Micah, even though he no-showed in the playoff game. And some of the other guys that you mentioned uh, over the course of the last couple weeks, Willie. But I'm, in, I'm not in a rush to extend Dak Prescott. I got him under contract meaning I control his future in the NFL. And after that performance, I don't know why I would suddenly give that guy a couple hundred million dollars. And I agree with you, but my question back to you is because Dak said at the end of his presser after losing to the Green Bay Packers, I wouldn't be the quarterback I was this year without Mike McCarthy. Right. Can Dak Prescott save Mike McCarthy's job? No, I don't think he can. I think, mm. uh, I, look, I think players last, coaches don't. And my gut is that if you brought in – I'm just saying the name for the sake of the conversation. If Jim Harbaugh became the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, I'm not worried about his impact on Dak Prescott. Yeah, but you have to, right? Because when you lost Kellen Moore, there was, it was, a, there was a legit concern about a regression. That didn't happen with Dak. Actually, he got stronger. And he talked about Mike McCarthy yeah. really putting him yeah, in the Yeah, but Mike McCarthy was there with Kellen Moore. Like, tell me he yeah, never but it was spoke Kellen, to Dak Prescott. It was Prescott. Kellen Moore's office. This, was, this is Mike McCarthy's office. And yeah. this was Dak thriving within that office with C.D. Lamb and the rest of the pieces. So if I am Dak, I do go Jerry. I'm like, hey, hey. I'm sorry about Sunday. <laughs> well, let's start there. My bad. Yeah, My yeah, bad. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Should have played better. Got right? away from us a little bit there. Oops. Right? Sorry. My bad, right? I know what you wanted. Yeah. Three, 12, and five seasons. I got better this year. I actually felt like I played the most confident, competent. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's hold on to him, maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's talk this out. I think you're going to have a very emotional uh, Jerry Jones making a rash decision. And to me, I'm surprised that it hasn't happened already. I can't see Mike McCarthy lasting the week. I really can't because, you know, you're talking about an 81-year-old multi-billionaire owner who thought this was the year I have the best team to make the run. Wow. And not only did I not get to a Super Bowl, I get knocked out in my own building. I get embarrassed in my own building by a team that was 9-8 and eight and barely got in. If I just sit back... I do what I did with Jason Garrett. I just believe he's a competent coach. He'll figure it out that I'm not me. 
Like, one of the things about Jerry Jones is be Jerry Jones. Right. Like, be George Steinbrenner. Right. Be Mark Cuban. Like, make decisions, stand by him, because you own the squad. But at the end of the day, you're talking about possibly bringing in Bill Belichick, right? Has Bill Belichick done anything with the quarterbacks he's had that he's drafted? Yeah, but Dak Prescott's better than the but quarterbacks. But my point is you're supposed to be the difference, right? Like, defense I think Bill Belichick is a mastermind. We yeah. never doubt that, and I know we, he rests on his laurels. But you're talking about bringing in a guy who can get you over the hump. Yeah. Do you honestly believe right now that way Bill Belichick has coached the last couple of years that he can come into Dallas? Yes, and there's no doubt about it. There's so there's so much more talent on the Dallas Cowboys roster than there is in New England. If you take Bill Belichick and put him in but charge of those roster, guys, by the way. doesn't matter to me. There's that, not a single player that you would replace on the Patriots with a with they replacing the Cowboys with a player. Maybe the one or two, but essentially your, your point is right. But I'm not hiring him to be the GM. Right? I'm hiring to coach the guys I got. And if the Dallas Cowboys don't acquire a single player yep. and bring all 53 guys back and get Diggs back from injury, I could go win a Super Bowl with Bill Belichick as my coach. And I, to be fair, Jim Harbaugh is my coach. I could go win a Super Bowl. I, Mike McCarthy will not make it to the next round of the playoffs. Do, He'll be gone by Friday. Do you have a conversation with Dak Prescott's agents about extensions? No, I no. don't. I, as a matter of fact, when they call me, I don't even pick up the phone. I let him know how pissed off I am at the way that guy performed in a playoff game in my building because I've given him a boatload of money, yep. and he's given me what? A 2-5 and five playoff record. I've given him everything he needs, an offensive line, wide receiver, tight end, a good defense. What else does this guy need not to throw interceptions in the postseason? So when Dak Prescott's agent goes, oh, hello, and Jerry Jones' secretary goes, Mr. Jones' office, who's calling, please? <laughs> and they go, it's Dak's agent. Click. You're right. I don't answer it. I don't answer it at all because they need to know it's time for some tough love. We're going to let him be a lame duck quarterback. He's going to get us $60 million bucks, you know, against the cap. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to tell Dak, I'll tell you what, you get to an MC championship game, contract will take care of itself. But until then, you've done nothing. Yeah, I think you got to be careful. I, by the way, they gave the guy $150 million. But it's million not about the ready. money, Craig. It's, it's always not, about the it's money. It's about the quarterback. Like, Dak played his best football this year after he told not you. Not January, didn't Sure, but during the regular season, he got you there. Like, we talked about the start of this season, how the defense was going to spearhead this team. It wasn't. It was the offense. It was the emergence of Dak Prescott. By the way, if I may, Go ahead. and you know I love you. Sure. But let's also remember the narrative, which was factual, this entire year with the Dallas Cowboys. Same narrative the Miami Dolphins have to eat. <laughs> Slurp it up. Dak Prescott put up gaudy numbers. He didn't play against anybody. They have one win against a winning team. So at, while he had a great year, regular season, and they won 12 games, and they got the two seed, go back now and take a look at all the number pampering that happened Ray, you're when, not, they you, the you Giants, you're when, when they played the Jets, when they played the Jets, when they played Carolina. Not eight, no, I'm not, not done. Yeah. When they played Washington <laughs> twice. When, when they, and, and, uh, the and one New winning team they beat was the Eagles, who are Trash. Right. Thank oh, you, okay. Jacoby. But they weren't yes. trash at the time. Me yes, and Jacoby on the same yes, page. They no. See yes, that? Yes, they were. They're not hitting no at home without era. that. In just, the last two seasons. Just open up and have a drink. All right. Just <laughs> celebrate the fact that all the teams America hates are out. Woo! Now, I know Cowboy Nation is the largest nation in the NFL. I respect you, Cowboy fans. I want you to drink with us because while Cowboy fans are trying to figure out, man, how do I get through another week of work? I got to pull my jeans up, you know, and uh, all that crap, right? Yeah. Because the Dallas Cowboys let them down. The Dallas Cowboys got the greatest news anybody could get. The Eagles were worse. Yeah, the Eagles were worse. <laughs> the Bye -bye. Eagles were worse. Yeah, this oh, yeah. Packers. Shake it all down. I got to tell you, the last 10 ounces of a 40, not as good as the first <laughs> 10. <laughs> no, 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 Your no. face is telling everybody. You're like, Ugh. Woo! I'm not driving home, though. I can tell you that yeah, right boy. now. Anyhow, that's how good last night's loss was for Philly. It brought Dallas fans right back up, feeling good about themselves. And what a poop show the NFC East is right oh, now. Oh, God. Is. Right? It is. It's, it's, it's great like to be the, a commander. The Cowboys are going to have a new coaching staff. The Eagles are going to have a new coaching staff. The Commandos are going to have a oh, new no, coaching staff. The Giants staff. are also going to have a new coaching staff because Wink Martindale just straight up left. Yeah. Wink Martindale's like, I'm, I'm out. out. I'm, I'm out. out. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm out. Don't I'm call out. me. Fire my I'm not, I'm not fire resigning. Me. I'm not doing anything. I'm just leaving. Bye. Yeah, and apparently the story now in New York is that all the other coaches hate Brian Dable. 
hate him with a passion. Uh, and he's lost the uh, the coaching staff. It's and you have an entire new coaching staff working with Brian Dable because he's like, um, what are you, like a dictator. Oh. Yeah. He's like a dictator on the sideline, I mean, he's the head and guy. everybody hates him. He's a guy. It was an atrocious season for the uh, Giants, man, and you got to do something. Yeah, they, they call that a dictator. Well, yeah, be careful now. I, I, be careful now. Be careful I'm now. Stay off All that right, one. We got. <laughs> I, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. Go to break. Go to break. Hold on. Let me check my handy dandy notes here. <laughs> Coming up after the break, it says here: Should the Dolphins extend to it? I'll answer that now. No. What else we got? <laughs> right after this. You know, it's funny when you do when you do a daily uh, sports talk show or TV show on a national level, you get to talk about you know every team, uh, not just like a local team. Like when I was in New York, you talked about the Giants and Jets. On this show, you talk about everybody. And when you're critical of a team, or you make you know when you when you make predictions or proclamations about teams, a lot of times it's somewhat predictable that uh, the fan base of that team hears you, sees you, and they attack you. Oh, um, this usually happens for sleepy towns that all of a sudden have a little taste of success, and they suddenly blow out their chest and start peacocking around town. The problem for all you people is that I've done this for a long time, and I never lose, right? So, case in point, why don't we go to the L.A. Rams, who uh, a year ago, literally like this week, a year ago, I may have mentioned on this show, uh, prior to you guys being here, that the Rams franchise was dead and gone. And, of course, they make a run to the playoffs, so I get tweets like this one. Um, How's it feel to be an idiot? Yeah, how's it feel to be a bleeping idiot? Well, now, and that's pretty much, you know, I got thousands of those from the nine Rams fans who are jobless and sit at home on social media all day. So here's the good news. I always win. Hey, Rams fan, guess what? The Rams. Dead. That's right. Oh, stamped it. I mean, that's right. That's that's in your face. That's a bad omen. I mean, I don't know. The staff does not like you. The staff does not like you, That's kind of harsh, Craig. We asked for a stamp that said dead. They put it on your On your head there, Craig. They hate you, bro. Maybe they don't get what the bit is. Yeah. I don't think they understood the bit. Like, let me walk you through it. I'm not dead. Are you sure? It's... The Rams. Yeah. Dead. 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 Yes. Yeah. All right, let's go to... Uh, uh, I think it may come back up, Greg. Let's yeah, go to yeah, the yeah. worst city in the state of Ohio. I lived in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I loved it. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh. When Joe Burrow came back, it looked like he was healthy, and they beat San yeah. Francisco oh, yeah. a couple months ago. Game. All of a sudden, Bengal fans started ranting and raving about things I said about the Bengals. Here's an example of some Cincinnati fans. Uh, yeah, we're totally scared to death, right? And on and on and on, they called me names, and they made fun of my past. Well, guess what, Bengal fans? The Bengals. Dead! Oh, oh they did. <laughs> Craig, you got to talk to somebody yeah, upstairs. They, you got, I think you it's, bought us uh, all bagels this morning, too. Yeah. I all think, I said was I wanted you some soup. all yeah. bagels. That's all I said. This is um, funny, man. All right, let's go down to Duval County. Du- now, Duval. Willie experienced this alongside me uh, this year when we came out and said the Jaguars were paper tigers yep. and not the real deal and couldn't play in the same pool as teams like the Baltimore Ravens. The 17 Jaguar fans that exist, they attacked me. Here's an example of one of those attacks. Oh. Um, my name is Craig, <laughs> and, and I don't know, know ball. ball. That's yeah. from Joey it's Bag of Donuts, donuts. Yeah. down in yeah, Duval County. Bag of donuts. Well, donuts. guess what, Joey? The Jaguars, dead. Here it comes. Oh, oh. Yeah. They're not laying off it, Craig. They that looks you. like yeah. it's pretty consistent. They could have just put yeah. the word there, but they're like, no, no, no. Let's get <laughs> it on his face. They yeah. refuse to move your face. Yeah, so. like, yeah. I kind of thought yes. just dead would be there, Jacob. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Now uh, I'm the one who's dying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And let me give you. Let, let me give you another example. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, who I've long had a bad relationship with, uh, their fan base. Yeah. Obviously, the Eagles started off the year 10-1, and, yep. so and I try to explain to everybody week after week that they just weren't right. This was not the same team as last year. I got this. You're a bleeping idiot. Shut up. Better yet, go away and stay away. away. From oh, the wolf. Guess what? That's from the yeah, wolf. Do you agree with the wolf? Yeah. The staff of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But after last night's debacle, when you lose 32 to 9 to Baker Mayfield Ooh. and Tampa Bay, the Eagles dead. dead.
Oh, yeah. oh finally yeah. got it right. Well, the timing, the timing right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, they're pretty I would relentless. say this. Uh, I'm not sure if Kansas City's coming after me next, <laughs> <laughs> or 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 some other city. Yeah. But just know this. I love you, Buffalo. I love you, Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. Remember that. I love you, Buffalo. So, and it's a good lesson to be learned that you know I've never lost. I've never lost when it comes to these fights. So send all the hatred and negativity okay. my way. I'll slurp it up, and I'll just wait to be right, because eventually, always right on this show. All right, from that, let's go down to South Beach, boys, because Chris Greer is the general manager of the Miami Dolphins. That's not Chris Greer. That's two, actually. He plays quarterback. He's going into the fifth year of his contract. Now the Dolphins already picked up that fifth-year option. So next year, two is going to make $23 million. But Chris Greer was asked, are you going to sign him to an extension? Listen to the general manager. You know, so the goal is to have him here uh, long term playing at a high level. So, you know, that's always the goal. And um, we'll continue and we'll communicate with him through the off season here. And, and like we've always said in the past, you know, you guys know me, we don't really talk in the media <laughs> through all that stuff. So we'll just we'll keep all those talks internal and with his rep Look, reps. Look, bottom line is this. There's no rush to sign him to the five-year $250 yeah. million dollar deal that he'd probably get because he'd be the next in line you know, from the, the, the couple classes of quarterbacks that are starting to get paid like that. You know, the guys like Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, et cetera. But the reality is this. There's no rush to have to do it. You've got him under contract. You picked up that fifth-year option. He's going to get $23 million guaranteed next year. And again, you know, guys like two or guys like Dak Prescott are in interesting positions. Here's why. They were disappointing in the playoffs. Yep. There's now the question mark of, is this guy Tua in this right. case? Is he really the guy that's going to lead us to the promised land? Remember, hasn't won a playoff game yet. Yep. Mike McDaniel hasn't won a playoff game yet. And we excused last year because, of course, oh, of what? Concussion. The concussions. This year we don't excuse. He was terrible, albeit 30 below zero. So he's got an out for that performance as well. But to me, there's no rush to have to do it. Two is going to get a big contract. He's going to get it in Miami. Because here's the reality. There's not a lot of good quarterbacks. And you could be the 11th best quarterback in the NFL. You're still better than two-thirds of the league. Mm. And your commodity teams are all dying for. So I'm with Chris Greer, who I don't respect all that much because I think he food barred that team for the better part of a decade plus now. I do like Mike McDaniel a lot. But there's no rush to have to get Tua signed to a five-year deal. Yeah, but at the end of the day, there's certain things you needed to see out of Tua. Can he stay healthy, right? Yeah. Can he lead this team? He had 29 touchdowns. Tyreek Hill was an MVP candidate because of it. There are certain things you just need to see from him solely. Yeah. But overall, I agree with you. There's no rush, but you got to do something with this defense because to be able to, able to, to, be able to win in the playoffs, you have to have a defense. You got to be able to run the ball, which we thought they could, and, and they didn't. And by the way, I know that they look terrible against Kansas City, and we can blame it on the weather if you want to. I have no problem with that. Although Kansas City had no problem coming out throwing the ball all. all over the field. They also have a special quarterback and Patrick Mahomes. I'll give Miami this bit of grace. They had seven starters out with injury. There's not a team in the NFL that's going to overcome losing seven out of 22 starters. They would not have had to go on the road to Kansas City if Tua played better against the Bills. If Tua did not have the ball yeah. in his hands and then throw it to the Buffalo Bills at the very end well, of that game. Okay, yeah. so I'll do you one better on that because you're right. But what I'll do, if you're the Miami Dolphins, the day that lives in infamy for you is December 11th. Because on December 11th, the Miami Dolphins had a two-touchdown lead the in the Titans. fourth quarter against the Tennessee Titans. Yep. And when the Titans scored, the Dolphins got the ball back, and their possession lasted less than a minute. And then all of a sudden, Tennessee got the ball, trailing by six. Mm -hmm. All right, And they went 61 yards in six plays in 30 seconds. And with Will Levis yep. at quarterback. The Miami Dolphins forfeited home field advantage in the first two rounds of the playoffs and had to go to Kansas City because with three minutes to go in a game against Tennessee and a 14-point lead, they didn't close the door and win the game. And that's the game, if I'm a Dolphin fan, that I circle. That was the malfunction. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you have to also live – 
you have to also live and understand who Tua is. He's not going to be a scrambling quarterback, right? Like He's not no. going to be a quarterback that's going to make plays with his leg. He has to be able to deliver the football out of the well. But also understand with that, if you go against a D-line who's a little bit taller athletic, he struggles against. So there's certain quirks and things that if you're going to invest in him, that you're going to now have to protect him from and yeah. see how you can make him advance. Because right now he's terrified of running. He's terrified of getting hit. And if he doesn't have Tyreek uh, Tyre Hill on the field, he becomes an It's not only that. Is he doesn't really go through progressions. Like, if he doesn't let go of the ball in two seconds, yeah. it's not happening for if that you're not, If you take away his first option and the it's Bills show that, it's over. It's a little gimmicky. He's an instant quarterback and a, and a throw-and-pray quarterback, right? And hope well, that accurate. my guys make plays. Yes. Yeah. He's accurate 20 yards in for sure, but he got exposed. You know, you got exposed late in the year against Tennessee, against Buffalo, the game you're talking about, and obviously out there in Kansas City because we all watched that game, and I saw Kansas City come out doing what? Throwing the ball right. uh, everywhere. Yeah. It wasn't just like, you know, you know, those slant patterns or let's you know, throw some screen passes. They were throwing the ball because that's their offense. Miami came out, and they were like, we don't trust this guy to throw the ball. <laughs> so outside of the one deep ball, which he underthrew, yep. to Tyreek, who made a great play on scored a touchdown, every other pass was sideways because yep. they didn't trust their quarterback yeah. out of Kansas City. All right, we got a decision to make. We got winners and losers, or I can take a break. Winners you, and losers. Winners and winners losers. And losers. And losers. Hey. All right, Baker Mayfield, a wild card winner. Damn near threw for 400 yards yesterday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. He only made $4 million bucks this year. He's made more than half that now in bonuses based on his great performance, and they made the Eagles look like children out there. Baker Mayfield has resuscitated his career, and he is now again a top-10 quarterback in the NFL. He is a winner. Oh, yeah, 100%. He played magnificent last night. I like the way he started the game. He started off aggressive, throwing the football, and they had a run game to compliment him. So, yeah, <laughs> he's better. And I said it time after time. You said it just 20 seconds ago. It's hard to find a good, efficient, competent quarterback. Yep. He played that And like Tampa's that last in night. a weird spot now with Baker Mayfield because it was a one year deal. Yep. Now, there's the things they can do contractually, obviously, to keep him there. But I can guarantee you this. Baker Mayfield is not playing for Tampa next year for $4 million. No. I can guarantee you that no. right now. To be fair, he's made $50 million in his career, so he ain't crying either. Right. But he's not playing for $4 million next year. All right, who's the big loser? That? Sorry, buddy, but Kenny Pickett. Because oh, as the Kenny. Steelers were getting blown out going into halftime <laughs> against the Buffalo Bills, and the Steelers had a chance maybe to goose that offense a little bit, Kenny Pickett never took his winter parka off. <laughs> and the Pittsburgh Steelers said, we cannot win with you. Mason Rudolph is our starting quarterback. Yep. The future of Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh is very dubious right now. He winds up being a loser. Ah, yeah, it was definitely in jeopardy. And don't be surprised if you, you, there's talks about Russell Wilson joining the Pittsburgh Steelers next year. Oh. Oh. Just saying. Also, there's, oh. a, there's an old uh, wives' tale in the NFL, which does get proven true every now and then. You cannot win football games when you have Smurf hands. Nah. Oh, well, true yeah. story. True story. Small hands. Small hands. Small uh, okay. you, gloves. Small 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 That's a whole different thing. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, um, who's the big winner this week? Uh, <laughs> I hate to say this because it's self-serving, but I am. Oh, I am. oh, oh okay. Oh. Craig, you have a winner. <laughs> 40, Craig. Big winner. Big win. Because these are the fan bases that hate me the most. And the Eagles get knocked out against Tampa Bay. Yeah. Still six be out there. of seven. The Jaguars don't even make the playoffs. The Bengals don't make the playoffs. And the Rams lose to Detroit. And I'm celebrating all of it. Ooh. I am Peacock. boy. On a Tuesday. <sighs> We got 40s. Ah, nothing better than cold 45 in the morning in New York City yep. when it's five degrees outside. Love it. Uh, who's the big loser today when you wake up? That, of course, is the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, Philly, man. You get, yeah, you're, I don't losers. understand how you start the season 10 and 1 and you're flying high and you're looking great and then you have to take a nosedive. Yeah. It's bad. And, and by the way, to be fair, it's not just because the Eagles got embarrassed last night by Tampa Bay. The game was not even competitive. Yeah. No. If you went to bed early, it wasn't competitive. It was one of the worst games of the opening weekend. But not only that, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies blew a 3-2 lead in the world in the in the NLCS, right? Yep. Uh, at home Last against the Arizona home. Diamondbacks. The uh, Philadelphia 76ers couldn't close out the Celtics in game six or seven with a chance to go to their first Eastern Whoopsie. Conference Finals with Joel Embiid. The soccer team lost in the championship round, and the women there are ugly. So that's the deal. 
Sorry, not sorry. Philadelphia, bunch of losers. Uh, who's the big winner? America. 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 Oh, America. Oh, America. 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 Yeah. America. How's it go? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have another sip. Have another sip, Craig. All right. From sea to shining sea. That's it. Why are we all as Americans big winners today? Because. None of us had to go to work yesterday or today and see that obnoxious cowboy fan or eagle fan, oh, you know, oh, peacocking yeah. into the into the cubicle <laughs> at work yeah, going, yeah. hey, did you see yeah. my eagles last night? Did you yeah. see the eagles last night? Yeah, hey, cowboys are great. I love the cowboys. Yeah, frauds. Yeah. Bottom line is this. We all win because they lost. I know yes. I won because I know I have a lot of family members who are cowboys fans. Haven't heard from them. Since. Haven't heard from them. And I'm confused to pick up the phone. The final group of losers from this past weekend, the first weekend of NFL playoffs. I hate to say it, are those of you that wagered your hard-earned money on the Dallas Cowboys to either cover the ten against Green Bay or on the money line, where you laid significant odds against because you bet on the Dallas Cowboys. These sports books in this country collectively. Are you ready? Made $53 million Ooh, on Dallas fine. Cowboy wagers this past weekend. Bet with your head, not over. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That's a bad look. And that's a lot of people chasing money, which is not a good idea. But over $50 million went to the sports books because that's how many people took the Dallas Cowboys either money line or with the spread. I, I mean, you you took the Cowboys. I don't bet. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. You took the Cowboys. Too. Took the Bills? Yeah. yeah. They oh, covered. Okay. See how everybody jumped ship? Oh, they covered. <laughs> All of a sudden, nobody took Nobody. Nobody, nobody took anybody. Cowboys. Right. Cowboys. I know All right. Cowboys. Look, we got much more show coming your way. Uh, that includes first in football, the latest on Mike Tomlin uh, walking out of a press conference yesterday after their loss to the Buffalo Bills. And we've got some Bill Belichick news as well. What? He has actually interviewed for an opening in the NFL. But where? We'll tell you right after this. By the way, uh, sometimes you can tell uh, if a man's confident walking into a building for a big playoff game. That guy yesterday was Stefan Diggs. Oh, yes. Who uh, has a real interesting sense of style yes. uh, here in the postseason. Check him out. This is Stefan Diggs uh, walking into uh, Highmark Stadium in Buffalo. Boom! Yeah. I don't need a jacket. <laughs> That's a guy that apparently he works on his biceps and forearms a lot. But yeah. no, no, it's, yeah. it's no. like Popeye before the spin. It was like the Chiquita Banana Girl. <laughs> Chiquita Banana. Hey. Uh, now, to be fair, uh, Stefan Diggs is not the only guy with that type of impeccable style. Yep. My main man, Willie Cologne, oh, has Willie the Z. same style. Oh, there you go. Z. Yeah, look at me. Look, look yeah. at Willie. That's Willie 90 pounds ago. At least my face matched my arms. <laughs> <laughs> Help. That's really after a 96 hour water fast right, <laughs> right. there. All right, from that. We go back to Jacoby now for first and football. First and football, we start with the other side of that Bills loss, the Steelers. There's head coach Mike Tomlin after a bad playoff loss. He was asked about the fact that he has one year left on his contract, and I can't even call this an exchange. Here's how the interaction went. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. No, back. Yeah. I'm out. That's so a Willie, guy, very yeah. comfortable. Uh, what do you say about the way Coach Tomlin handled that? I thought he handled it well. Why, <laughs> uh, like, why address nonsense? It has nothing to do with what happened in the game. It's about the team and the way they performed against the Buffalo Bills. You know, listen, he's 51 years old, 8-10 and 10 playoff record. I think for me, as a Steeler, a guy who played for the organization, takes a lot of pride for playing in the organization, having won a Super Bowl, on and on and on. My concern is when you have your star running back in Najee Harris make comments and say, hey, man, we have an in-house problem. We have a Ooh. discipline problem, right? That's for me because that's been the narrative coming out of the locker room for a long time. And so I love Mike Tomlin and everything he represents. And I think a lot of people, whether you're still a fan or not, still love him and have, and have admire him. However, man, if you want to get to where you got to get to, there's in-house issues. Because we're not talking about a coach. Because, right, you got rid of Matt Canada, right? You have Mike Sullivan, and he did a decent yeah. job to kind of hold the ship. But overall, man, you still have young pieces. Now, the quarterback, you know, the quarterback position is an issue. Like I mentioned before we went you to think? break. You think? Yeah, yeah, obviously. But, I mean, listen, if Russell Wilson's able to come along because the Pittsburgh Steelers, Rus the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Raiders were on Russell Wilson's shortlist before he became a Bronco. So who's, who knows what happens down the road? But yeah. my, my main concern for the Steelers right now is if you got your star running back saying, hey, it's not the coaches, it's not Mike Tomlin, it's us, 
He, if he's going to be, continue to be the head coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he's going to have to put that stink out that building. I think Mike Tomlin's in a very rare and unique uh, situation because he's been a head coach in the NFL for 20 years now and has had you know, great success. He's got a Super Bowl ring under his belt. He has another one when he was a defensive backs coach with Tampa. So he's got two rings. He is highly, re- widely regarded as a Hall of Fame caliber coach. And I think he does get into the Hall of Fame one day as a coach. 17 seasons, every one of them a winning season. He's got nothing else to prove. And I think guys like him, who I would call an old school mentality type coach, uh, disciplinarian type yeah. coach, uh, you know, my handshakes, my word, my bond, the yeah. oak and all that stuff. I think what you saw this year for the first time ever is a changing of the guard when it comes to the players. Players are different than they were even 10 years ago. Right. You can speak to it having played. Right. The dudes coming out of college are different. They're raised differently. They have different beliefs, uh, work ethic, discipline. All those things that are part, uh, uh, an integral part of football is changing for the worse, not for the better. So if I'm Mike Tomlin, and you can speak to this, I don't care what we see on the outside. The reality is this. The life of a head coach is not fun. The life of a head coach, if you're going to be good at it, are 20 hours, yes, 20 hour days, no joke, 10 months out of the year. Yes, sir. You could take the month of February and March off if you want, or six weeks off, if that. And then from March 1 to the Super Bowl, it is a grind. It takes years off your life. You have no relationship with your kids, with your family, because you're focused on one thing, and that's your football team. So for a 51-year-old guy who's now been a coach for 17 years, who's going to the Hall of Fame, who's got the rings, if I'm Mike Tomlin, I would not be shocked if he says, I'm done. Yeah. He will have a job tomorrow on any network he wants to go work for, make a couple million bucks a year, and do what Bill Cowher did. You know, spend the last 20 years of your working life on TV once or twice a week, making a lot of money and being regarded as a great head coach. I would not be surprised if that's where this goes for Mike Tomlin. And I don't, and honestly, I don't think he's ready for that. I mean, Maybe he's, still, not. he's still a young coach. He's 51 years old. But at the end of the day, you understand who Mike Tomlin is, what makes him special. What's his it factor? His it factor is to take on high-risk players, players who have – you know, character issues, guys who like, man, you put him in a uniform, it could be bad for your outfit. What he does is say, bring him on because I can coach him. I can yeah. deal with him. You know who else is like that? Bill Belichick is like Correct. That. Same Correct. kind of thing. Which brings us to second in football. Yes. We have some news about Bill Belichick. Yeah. Guess what? Apparently, there are reports that he has spoken to owner of the Falcons, Arthur Blank, maybe on a boat in Antigua, maybe not. But there are reports that they have spoken. How do you feel about the fit for Belichick? in the Falcons. First off, Antigua sucks. I didn't make it 24 hours there I and, uh, and left after no joke about 18 hours. Oh, okay. uh, it's disgusting. Uh, that being said, you don't go to the Atlanta Falcons if you build Belichick. Right. I don't care how much money the founder of Home Depot has, Arthur Blank, or doesn't have. It's a bad situation. I get it. You're in a bad division. You probably win the division because you're better than everybody else as a head coach. But the Falcons stink. They don't have a quarterback. They don't have tons of talent on both sides of the ball. And if you're Bill Belichick, you just left the situation where the cupboard was bare and you didn't have a quarterback. You have at least three opportunities, if you want them, that you can get. Whether that's the Chargers, I know Harbaugh interviewed there. Yeah. Whether that's the Eagles, who haven't fired Sirianni yet, but they will. Whether that's the Cowboys, who haven't fired McCarthy yet, but they will. And play this out. We're all now waiting for Jerry Jones to fire Mike McCarthy. Yep. We're going to wait now in Philadelphia for Jeff Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, to fire Nick Sirianni and that coaching staff, right? But my view of it is they may not make those moves until they talk to Belichick privately, until they talk to a Harbaugh privately, until right. they wait and see what Mike Tomlin does. There's no reason to fire the coach and then try to find the replacement. I would have high-level conversations offline, behind the scenes, and try to get a read on, would you be willing to come here? If you came here, what, do you don't, what don't you like about my roster? What do you like? What would your plan be? And then once I get a feeling that I can get the guy, 
Then I put everything in motion, and I do whatever it takes to go get the guy. That's what I would do. Yeah, I, I think you said something a couple of days ago I think is spot on because I think if you bring him in, you got to meet Bill 50-50. This is what I want from you, and this is what you got to tell me what you expect from me. But at the end of the day, I want you to be a game day coach because you as a GM hat, you wearing a GM, no. GM hat doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like I think there's a lot of teams that want Bill Belichick for what he has for done. Sure. For but sure. But I think he's just a different coach. And by the way, if I am Arthur Blank and the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, of course I want Belichick Yeah, because he represents competency, which I currently don't have. So it makes sense to me for all those teams that have kind of been, you know, just like effing around in the mud. All yeah. of a sudden, if I could go get Bill Belichick, it lets everybody know I'm for real. So you have Belichick, easy division, right? They're going to get better with Belichick, and then maybe there's like a Justin Fields move you can make. Maybe. maybe. A quarterback, you got Bajon Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Cordell Patterson, three great offensive players the that are being is underused. Sneaky. Defense is pretty good. There's a world in which I could see him going here because of the division and him looking at those 15 wins he We got to take a quick break, but speaking of the Dallas Cowboys situation, we're going to bring it back. It's the segment on the show that is often copied, but never duplicated. <laughs> it's called The Wheel of oh, Jerry. Jerry. And it's right after this. All right, welcome back to the Carden Show. Great news, everybody. Hey, what up? We have found the missing video. This doesn't exist. What? Uh, but our staff did a great job. We have the exclusive footage now of the last Dallas Cowboy Super Bowl parade. Oh. You guys want to play right there? Oh, oh yeah. There it is right there. Yeah. Oh, good job, yeah, Craig. That's, uh, yeah, that's that's the last time. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, Joe Jones is right there. Uh, oh, man. There. Oh, hey, is yeah. that, that Emmett Smith there? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the last time. That's, that's the, right yeah. there. That's Fort Worth right there. Well, like America's yeah. getting discovered. All right, there. time oh, now. Yeah. For the segment that, let's just call it what it is, ESPN copied from us and did it really embarrassingly badly. Be better. So we're going to show them how to do it so when they steal our stuff, they can do it better. It's now called The, the Wheel, Wheel of Jerry. Jerry. All right. We're going to help Jerry Jones out. All these guys are decisions that Jerry Jones has to make. Yep. These guys will answer what he should do. Yep. Ready? Let's, let's go. It. Spin that wheel. Let's go. guy is Ooh. Jim yeah, Harbaugh. Yeah, it is. Should Jerry Jones make Jim Harbaugh the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys? I'm going to I'm gonna like this. I'm going to say no, Craig. Oh. I'm going to say no, too. Yeah, I, oh. I don't really. Not at all. No. I, listen, okay, tell I, me why. Well, I'm going to tell you why because, listen, I think he is, I think, yeah, <coughs> I, think, I think he has a better opportunity to do what he wants to do in Michigan. I think his, you got to understand, he, he he beefed with the front office at the 49ers. It yeah. didn't end well, right? right. Everywhere he's gone, yeah. he's been turned Thank you, in Willie. Trouble. Why? If you're an owner of the Dallas Cowboys, right, yeah. who's trying to add some stability, get me the coach that can take me to the mountaintop. He doesn't care about that. Yeah. Jim, Jim Harbaugh runs on his own rules. Yeah. That's not good for Jerry. Thank you. I feel the same way. Not only did he beef with the front office when he was with the 49ers, no, he has <laughs> problem with the, the left athletic director in Michigan. Yeah. yeah. It's Every like way he's he goes, he's the highway. Everybody. It's, it's, if it's ended bad the last two times, what makes you think it's going to be different with Jerry? He Jones? is who he is. Forward. Who has it better we, than Jerry? We were also talking about so, fire if Harbaugh I may, Jim three Harbaugh years ago. won 70% of his games as an NFL head coach and took Colin Kaepernick to a Super Bowl. He won a national title in Michigan for the first time since 1948. And, oh, by the way, did Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones get along? Yeah. Did they? No. Uh, yeah. Well, and did the they end. win Super Bowls? Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, okay. Spin that. Wheel! Oh! Oh, my God! First off, that is Mike McCarthy. Uh, can you get a close-up of this real quick? Yeah. That's, that's rude. This that's right here. Just, the, yeah. the triple chin. Yeah. The triple chin. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Jerry Jones. There Barbecue's you go. Good I'll test. back out of it. There you go. All right. Should Jerry Jones keep Mike McCarthy three straight? 12 win seasons, one playoff win in four years. Should he stay or should he go? I'm going to be honest, you're not going to like this again. Keep him. You got you to oh, keep wow. him. Solely because of what he did with that press guy and what this offense looked like this year. Yeah. I understand they got embarrassed at home and all everything that would happen on Sunday. However, you need somebody that has stability. Yeah. They're stable. Three 12 or 5 win seasons. 
Dak Prescott had yeah. a great year this year. <laughs> the offense is money. Now, you have to figure out what's going on with your running game. The defense is an issue. Yeah. But keep Mike McCarthy. Here's the problem with keeping Mike McCarthy. And here's how it's going to play out. They're going to go 12-5 and five again. And they're going to lose in the first game in the playoffs again. And then you're going to be looking at yourself in the mirror and be like, how did I expect anything else to happen? Four years, yeah. one playoff win. It's not about the regular season. It's about you had a home game against the Green Bay Packers. You had won 16 straight home games, and you embarrassed yourselves. Mike McCarthy, got to go. Oh! oh! Got His to chin, go. still got chin up there. Spin that wheel! Yeah, Bill Belichick has interviewed with Arthur Blank of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh That's the only thing we know so far. Obviously, McCarthy's not been fired yet. If you're Jerry Jones, do you pick up the phone and try to get a deal done with B-squared? Uh, no. Oh, no. I just don't understand how you expect Jerry's ego and Bill Belichick's ego to actually fit in the state of Texas. Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones. That's a Barry Switzer. Jerry $25 million dollars a year. What are you talking about? I think Jerry has to be careful. The next guy has to be the right guy. Bill Belichick's old, man. Look what he's done the last couple of years in New England. By the way, a team he orchestrated and put together. Yeah, it like, doesn't he- matter. If you give him a talented team, and no one's going to argue that the Dallas Cowboys are a very Great talented roster. team. Right? They underperformed in the playoffs. You've got talent on both sides of the ball. All you need is a guy like Bill Belichick. What's your take? Check it. Blank check it. Two-year hey, deal. He's nine Whatever you need. 500 without Not a Brady. five-year deal. Two-year um, deal. Blank check what are you, why, why do you? Why are you so if I may, All right, let's just real quick. I want you to play along with me. Get ready. Please. You and I are going to do a little Sesame Street. Ready? Okay. One, One two, two, three, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. ten. No, no, nine's good. Nine's good. How many Super Bowls did Bill Belichick go to as a head coach? Six. No, he won six. Oh, he went to nine. Sorry. Nine. That means he's gone to 83% of all the Super Bowls ever played. That's But he can't. (laughs) But he can't go to Dallas and do what? And win. That's but it's about what you can do for me now. Really, you know what I hear? What can Mike McCarthy do for you now? When yeah. you tell Bring us to the season, playoffs. You're the playoffs. Hold on, Mike McCarthy. If that, if you want to chat to Jackson me and say, what have you done for me lately? Yes. Yeah. Lose by 40 to the Green Bay Packers. Well, that's why I didn't say in it. Dallas. I said now. You know what I hear from you right now? What's that? Spin that wheel. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Micah Parsons, double chin as well. What? Just to be fair, uh, to be fair, guy. Just to be to fair. Be All right, Micah Parsons has a big contract looming, of course. He likes to talk like he's the greatest football player on the planet, yeah. not just the best defensive player. Remember back in September, after that week one game, the 40 nothing blow to the Giants, he said, I want to be the MVP of the league. Lee. And people compared him to Lawrence Taylor. He no-showed in the biggest game of the year. Do you give Micah Parsons the bag? You pay him, but you also tell him to shut up, right? Take all his podcasts, put it in the bag, and throw it in the dumpster. Because right now, off the field, he's a distraction. And on the field, he didn't produce when they needed him the most. But he's a okay. hell of a pass so rusher in the top five. But add a little addendum to the contract. 100%. No podcast. Yeah. How about you, Jacobs? I'm hesitant to pay him. I want to wait another year. I want to see another year. Okay. I want to say there's so many big games where he just didn't show up. And everyone's like, oh, he gets held all the time. He gets double teamed all the time. Guess what? Beat the double team. Yeah. You're supposed to be him. Guess what? Beat the guy holding you. Like, I just didn't see what I was supposed to see from him this year. Fair. Spin Fair. that wheel. Yeah. Oh. What do you do with this one? Dad Prescott, he's oh against the cap next year. He's $60 million. That's a lot. All right? He's made a boatload of dough. One year left. No trade clause. You have a choice. Let him play out the year lame duck style and then try to get a deal done after the year or give him five years, $260 million, all guaranteed. What do you do if you're Jerry Jones with Dak Prescott? Uh, I think you let him play it out, man. Yes. You, you got You got Listen, I love Dak, 30-year-old quarterback. He's done a lot of great in his career, eight-year career. But if you're really trying to get to the mountaintop, he has yet to get you there. You no. got to see what happens. He barely, he barely got to the mountain. 
<laughs> like, like, when it means a mountain top. No, I'm saying. He, do you believe? Saying, that's why you got to play out a year. Maybe next is, year's the year. You he's out. He's base camping it. right now. Yeah, right. you got to earn it if you're Dak Prescott. Right, you we're have saying to the same it. thing. We're talking about $260 million. You absolutely have to earn it. I think you guys are on the same page. We're saying the same thing. I know, but I'm just acting like I'm disagreeing with you. Because that's how television works. All right. Spin that wheel. All right, that means I go to the envelope. Okay. Oh, the envelope. Ooh. What's in the what, envelope? What's in the envelope? What's the envelope saying? Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. I don't know if I want to say it. What are you looking at? Uh, I don't know if I want to say it. What, what is it? I don't know if I want to say it. Uh, but I got to say it. I just want to be clear to any executive watching that I didn't write it. Um, Who wrote it, Craig? Troy did. Okay. All right. Okay. Troy. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't write it, but it, it, it says. What's it say, Craig? It says. Jerry's 81. Right. Oh, come on. Oh, oh my God. God. You know what? Oh, my what? God. Get that that is. Screen. That is. Get that. That you just. Troy. Troy, what are you doing? What are you guys? The, the, what are you guys? Jesus, I mean. I mean. I mean you just switched. Mean, you you want so much better for Jerry, too. Yeah. It's a horrible casket. I want to apologize. Yes. I didn't know that. Right family. after a tough loss. I didn't know that's where that's we were going. Cowboys Nation and the Jones family. Yeah. I will tell you this. That's I disgusting, don't, I, Craig. I don't yeah. think that Mike McCarthy no. makes it to year five <laughs> with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, how do we go to break on that? Well, I tell you how. Uh, yesterday, the, uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, played the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, mm, you said that the Steelers were going to win. How'd it go? How'd it go? Uh, we went home and we're going to eat some wings. How'd it go? Uh, yeah, it didn't I go think well. Buffalo. Is that how you eat chicken? That's a horrible way to eat chicken. But I do. You got to finish that. You got to eat no, the DNA dumb. off that's that thing. Yeah. Oh, this that's is coming up. Meat on More on the Bills' big win against the Steelers. Yeah. I got to Kansas City right after this. You want some chicken? Good morning! Yeah. Welcome back to the Cubs Show. We got your early morning headlines, and we start with this. The Eagles got West yeah. in Tampa Bay. Now, there's reports that Jason Kelsey could be retiring. Oh. There's reports that Nick Sirianni oh. has lost the locker room. And this isn't a report, it's a fact. They got waxed wax. 32 to 9 by the Bucks. Question for you, Mr. Carton. Yes, sir. Carton. How are you enjoying this? Um, listen, it's been a party all morning because the Eagles are dead. So drink <laughs> up, America. Question for you is, what do you expect to happen now with this franchise? How much of an uh, overhaul are we going to see amongst the coaches and the players? God, I got to tell you, I hope it's a lot, and I hope it hurts. I hope it's Nick Sirianni, the entire, entire coaching staff, Matt Patricia, that stupid pencil in his ear, and it's great because there's nothing worse than a city that doesn't win a lot. All of a sudden, having a little brief run of success and possible championships and then not getting the job done. Because, you know, it's almost like if you show, if you give somebody a lot of money, you see who the real person is, right? When you give Philadelphia a little bit of success, you know, their true colors came out and their douchey, obnoxious fans that, frankly, none of us can relate to and we all start rooting against, right? I started a campaign here in New York years ago called Foo Philly because they're obnoxious people and I don't like to be around them really. And when I saw the Eagles essentially no show last night against an average Tampa Bay Buccaneer team and they made Baker Mayfield and that Tampa Bay offense look like the greatest show on turf. Like for that offense to score 30 points is not easy. But when you watch the video and you watch the plays of the game and you see the Eagles not tackling, you see wide open wide receivers running legitimately 20, 30 yards without an Eagle defender anywhere in sight. Well, that's all I need to see. And I know they went to the Super Bowl last year. I know they were 10 and 1, 11 weeks into this year, but they have a real problem on their hands. And it seems like the team has turned its backs on Nick Sirianni and that coaching staff. And again, you played, I didn't. I don't know you can ever get that back. I think once that horse is out of the barn, it's out of the barn. Yeah. And while they're upset in Philadelphia, I can tell you that Whoa! Here, here in New York City, when we have a couple lousy franchises trying to play football, we get great joy and we celebrate and we party when Philadelphia 
doesn't get the job done. So yesterday was a great day for New York. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, watching last night games, it's almost like Philly walked on the field without arms. They couldn't tackle anybody. Yeah. Right? And it was just bad. And I know that's kind of been their bungable this uh, all season. But, however, it was the run game for me that really was glaring. You talk about the first two runs. You asked the first run was a nine-yard run. And then the second one was a success. First and down. then you talk about the next 12 plays, 11 out of those 12 plays were all passes. Right. Like, wh- what are you doing? And so – I even want to show you a graphic right here. When the Eagles were 10 and 1, this is what they look like, right? You talk about rushing for 133 yards. You talk about actually having a 10 and 1 record. But once they dropped that, everything going went backwards. It was a regression. So for me, if you're Nick Sirianni and you talk about all your coaching roles, bottom line is you didn't do what got you did. Right. Which was running the ball. And the craziest thing about it, it's not like we just made it up. You had Eagle fans, you know, camping outside yeah, yeah, the yeah, Nova Care Center out there in Philadelphia. Begging the Eagles to run the ball. And I let yesterday, look, when they made that defensive stand late in the first quarter, first drive of the game, and they held Tampa to the field goal. I'm saying to myself, well, that's huge because Tampa's not a team that scores a lot of points. That's big for Philly. They only give up three points on the opening drive. They come out of the gate. DeAndre Swift, bang, nine yards. DeAndre Swift, bang, first down. Yep. And then the rest of the game, he only had a handful oh, of carries. I'm a, there's something, they, first of all, their tackling was atrocious. Yeah. Atrocious, but there's something worse than the tackling. I, the, I, I said this stat in the pre-show meeting, and the people that worked on the show were like, is that real? Yeah. This is their third and fourth down conversions. Oh. 0 for 11. There you go. Think about this. They played an entire <laughs> football game, yeah. and not one time did they find themselves in a touch-push situation on third down. Right. Not one time on fourth down did they have a fourth and two and go for it and get it. I, I've never seen a playoff game in which a team literally did not – convert a third or fourth and down Jacob, the entire not game. not just that. After they did score that touchdown and they got the penalty on the extra point right. and they decided to do it, it got stopped. Yes. Oh, uh, push push. It, yeah, and it never gets stopped. Uh, and again, I always thought the tush push, which I hate because my team doesn't do it, obviously, right? Yep. It's an unstoppable play because their will is, is greater than the defensive line. I wonder line. if this is the play that retired Jason Kelsey. Uh, it might have. It oh, might have. Think yeah. about it. Like, he's been successful all year with it. He's a guy under center uh, leading the charge in this play. When it got stopped, I wonder if he got off the ground like, yep, yeah. I'm done. Also, and I don't want to nitpick it because they got blown out. Like, they didn't score again yeah. after that final score. 32-9, to nine. but, you know, a lot of times you see coaches that are not very competent when they make decisions about whether to kick a field goal, go for two, that kind of stuff. And when it's 16-9 to nine and you finally got the game back to a manageable place despite not playing well and you score that touchdown and you kick the extra point, it's 16-10. to 10. Touchdown and an extra point, in theory you win the game, but you take the lead if you don't win the game, right? And I'm watching that going, why in the world would they go for two? It doesn't help them. You still need a touchdown or two drives that end in field goals to take the lead. 16 to 10 is the same damn thing as 16-11. That's the arrogance of Nick Sirianni, and that's what cost the Eagles over the last two months of the season. He's an arrogant coach who doesn't know what he's doing. I'll do you another favor. They kicked a field goal later in the game. Yep. Got a defensive penalty. Yep. So now it's fourth and five. And they throw a Hail Mary, essentially, essentially, into the end zone, incomplete. The Eagles took four points off the board. I'm not saying they would have won the game. But at 16-9, to nine, and you're feeling like, we got control of this now, kick the extra point, make it 16-10, to 10, or miss the two-point conversion. And I thought that really empowered Tampa to then respond with a scoring drive and put the game away. And I think you're spot on. With Nick Sirianni's arrogance, he should be worried because the owner, Jeffrey Lurie, he's fired a coach who has success previous year. You talk about he let go of Doug Peterson after he came to the Super Bowl. Yep. Overall, think about the coaches that left the build. Jonathan Gannon, even though Arizona yep. didn't have a great season, they were scrappy and tough. I'll right? tell you what, I-, I never saw the Cardinals give up the way I saw the Eagles give up yesterday. Especially no. against the Giants. That's right. That giant game? That's right. Like, that was a gutless performance. So if you're the owner of the Eagles, you don't have you don't, you it's have taken. to worry about. There's a fundamental there's a fundamental problem with your coaching staff. Yeah, who's the difference? I love it. They're all gotta go. Philly's in a rebuild mode yeah. right now, and yeah. that's uh, only and a year after going to a Super Bowl. Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, yeah. they could join Jason. And by the way, speaking of those defensive players that you're talking about right there, if you go back to Week 12 and just look at the NFL over the course of the last month and a half, the Eagles' defense 
Give me my stats right Ooh. now. Ooh. Look at that. Stats. Uh, I don't care what, how you want, what word you want to use, what adjective you want to use. That sucks. You Since are, week 12, though, Craig. <clears throat> right. You're talking, essentially, about nuts. the worst defense in the league right there. Now, it's one thing you have a bad week, yep. maybe two bad weeks. Sure. When you have six bad weeks and you're the worst defense, essentially, in the entire NFL, that means something. And for guys like us who sit here in New York, who root for the New York Jets, who root for the New York Giants, watching that douchey, arrogant head coach yep. and fan base get embarrassed on national TV to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, oh, <laughs> woo, woo, uh-uh, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Bye-bye, Philly. <laughs> See you because next year. If the Jets aren't going to win, then the Eagles better lose. I had a great night last night. Yeah, I got way too much right to Well, that wasn't the only game last night there, I Mr. Carter. Right <laughs> Before that yeah. one, there was a little contest out in Orchard Park between the Bills and Williams Steelers. And this one wasn't very competitive, i got to tell you, Willie. It helped a lot that your team kept turning the ball over, giving it to my team, who kept scoring the ball with beautiful passes. We like spotted you 14 game. points. Well, yeah. you know, Josh Allen worked for those points as well, and the Bills offense Oh, my clicking. God. We don't the, not tackle either. The defense lost a couple of key players, which I think could be bad in the next round. But let's just focus on this game, William. What happened to your Steelers, buddy? Uh, we it, it was just a bad. You cannot start a playoff game in Buffalo like that. You spotted Josh Allen and company 14 points, and we didn't do anything great in the first half. And I listen, I got to give my Steelers credit. In the second half, we came out swinging and banging the body. Hopefully, the head will fall. But overall, man, we didn't get it done. There was one bright spot, though. I do have a a video that kind of charged my Steelers' heart. What's the bright spot? And it was was our starting tight end, Fairmove, who laid the boom. (laughs) Laid the boom on a a defensive back that actually jumped. I jumped out of my seat like, hell yeah. That's how you get it going. I don't know if we have. Do we have it ready to go? Oh, we don't have it go. Uh, so it's just that's 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 disappointing. <laughs> that's just too bad. You don't even have the clip. You know what? It, it's kind of like the Steelers in yesterday's yeah. game. Not ready to go. Not so, ready to go. Look, uh, the whole thing. Just look. Give the Steelers credit for even getting into the playoffs. Obviously, at nine and eight, uh, Mike Tomlin again did a great job. Uh, a third string quarterback yes. starting in a playoff game for it yesterday. And I'll give Pittsburgh credit. You know, there's a difference sometimes in how you lose. At the end of the day, I know to the fan base, it doesn't matter because your season came to an end. But there's a great comparison between Pittsburgh in the second half yesterday afternoon against the Bills and what we saw last night from the Philadelphia Eagles. The Steelers never quit. Yep. The Steelers made it a one-score game. And then, of course, on the Sri Lanka touchdown, uh, the Bills put the game away. The Eagles quit. The Eagles had no fight at all in that second half to try to win a game. But can we show that? Can we show that play no. of uh, no. Mickey no. Fitzpatrick? No. You're not going to show it. Which one? The one uh, we tackled the wrong guy. What, what, yeah, the clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, my, my point is, you, when you're down and you need a play to be made, why yeah. wouldn't you lean on your All-Pro safety to make a tackle? It didn't Good happen. Time. But this is the worst part. Look at look at Miles Jack, 16, right? We're going to get him. We're going to get him. We yeah. tackle the wrong guy <laughs> at the goal line. Yeah. Two different numbers. Not even the same height. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it was just bad, man. Yeah. Uh, Stefan Diggs got tackled but didn't have the ball. Correct. At the yes. two-yard line right there. Look, bottom line is this. The Bills are just a better team yep. than the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are. I know they're banged up on yeah. defense. But Josh Allen is a top five quarterback in the NFL. And there's a reason the Buffalo Bills ran off, what is it now, five straight games to win the AFCs and to host these games, right? So I think if you're the Steelers and you were 10 point underdogs, we should just be happy that we made it. No, I I don't say that that because, look, when you lose a playoff game, and the Steeler fan base is one of the great fan bases in the NFL. Right. There's not a there's not a single Steeler fan today that's going to wake up going, "Oh, I'm so glad they made it," or "Hey, they gave it the old college try." I think when you get a little bit further away from it, and you look back on this season, yep. I think if you're a Steeler fan, you're going to say, "Man, I'm lucky. I got Mike Tomlin." I took a third-string quarterback who hadn't played football in damn near three years uh, with any meaning uh, in the NFL, and I gave the Buffalo Bills a run for their money. And I think it's hard to accept that now, but I think looking forward to the future, you know, Mike Tomlin once again showed you why he's a Hall of Fame coach. I agree. And I also, I also have to be worried about Mike Tomlin because this is 8-10 in the playoffs. That's your record. Yeah. At one point, like – 
what happens next. Like, we've seen it time after time. Right. Yeah, so, well, Mike Thomas is either going to come back for right. a year 18 or he's going to take a year off, feel good about himself, spend time with his wife and family, yeah. and then get back into coaching the way a so, lot of guys, guys do. Guys, all this discussion about the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. is cute and everything, but they're no longer in the tournament. Yeah. I want to just quickly turn our attention towards what's next for the Buffalo Bills. Sure, exactly. They hosted Mason Rudolph and took care of that. Yeah. But now they have... Patrick Mahomes coming to town. Yeah, it's a little different, yeah. Patrick Mahomes comes to town. Now, they're a cold-weather team. It's like the Steelers. They'll be used to that. It's going to be cold and snowy in Buffalo. My question for you is very early, who would you rather have starting this game, Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen? I mean, it's a loaded question because if anyone says Josh Allen, they're lying to what? you. That's not right? I mean, that guy is the biggest difference maker yes, of any quarterback of the last 20 years oh. in the NFL. So, I'd rather have Patrick Mahomes. I'm also am concerned about the Bills' defense because yep. they had another couple injuries yesterday. And the, the linebacking core is already depleted. Although, I give Von Miller credit. He actually played a pretty good game yeah, yesterday. He getting pressure on Mason Rudolph. That being said... I don't trust the Kansas City Chiefs. I've said it all year. Talk to me, Craig. I trust that guy. And even in the game we just watched against the Miami Dolphins, it was that guy that made the difference with his legs on a lot of plays where, you know, the pocket broke down, everybody's covered, bang, Mahomes is going down the field, you know, 20 yards out of clip. You cannot bet against Patrick Mahomes. But I got to be consistent. I can. Two months ago when the Bills were out of it, and nobody gave them a prayer to get into the playoffs. I told you that they were going to win the division yeah. and get to the AFC Championship game. So I am backing the Buffalo Bills. But I would never dare bet against that guy right there because he is the best quarterback of an entire generation. Yeah, for me, I got Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs. And not just because you know, I hate the Bills and I hate the fact that you got the stupid hat on your head, Jacoby. It's the fact that you can't trust Josh Allen, especially in pivotal situations. He will turn over the ball. He will regress at some point during the game. Listen, James Cook and that office line, if you let them run and let them spearhead that thing, it's a different outfit. But overall, man, Patty Mahomes playoffs, book it. Rasheed yeah, Rice but is Pat, at now look, I'm not saying he can't do it, but Patrick Mahomes has never had to win a road playoff game. And as much of a, of a home field advantage as Kansas City has, Buffalo's got the same damn thing. He is going into hostile territory. Sure. And let's be honest, not a great road uh, record this right. year for the Kansas nope. City Chiefs. So I think it's going to be a great game. I think we got through the kind of tough part of the NFL playoffs and some mismatches. I think this is a barn burner. That goes down to the last couple minutes. And I love the Bills. And I love the Bills. I love the Bills mafia. too, Craig. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. But remember this. You cannot bet against Patrick Mahomes. Yes, you Good can. Good show today. Let's to all it. enjoy it together. The Eagles are out. <laughs>